One world began with the creation of humans and spirits. It was entirely filled with harmony among beings. The spirits shared their power with humans, who could use it to use magic. According to one saying, where there is good, there will always be evil. Humans began to abuse magic for their own benefit and decided to start a great war to take away all the power of the spirits. As a result, the spirits had to hide their true appearance on this earth. And as soon as the spirits disappeared, all magic disappeared, the earth dried up and people began to gradually die. At the moment when everyone was already despairing, someone cried out with tears in his eyes. This person was saying that he could not continue to do nothing but watch so many good and innocent people die. He spoke of how he could never forget how merciful everyone had been to him. The last spirit that remained to live on the human earth listened to the plea and turned the tears into a beautiful river as a final gesture of generosity. Through the power of this miracle, life was reborn on earth and people proclaimed that man as king. And the country was named Lacrima, meaning tears. In the distant future, Lacrima became a great empire and gained extreme power. Many years later, in the present day, a girl was running down the hallway in the castle, shouting about how she wasn't going anywhere today. All the maids didn't understand what was going on this time and why it was so noisy today. Another maid answered that a letter had come from the Imperial Palace. Madam had been chosen as a candidate for Crown Princess. The maid was asking what happened to all the others who had been so far. The maid said that the prince has too complicated character and none of the girls could stand him, so they all ran away. And now the only lady left in the empire is their lady. But at the same time, the girl said that in any case, His Highness the Crown Prince was also the same and it would be better if he chose another lady. The maid said that in capriciousness of character, their mistress was not inferior to the prince. The princess stood in the middle of the corridor and shouted that she did not want to. Last of all, that friend had a few more words for the man who had become king. He talked about how his heirs from generation to generation would work miracles through tears. But if people forget their tears, this country will fall. This is the story of a country built from tears, of a crown prince who long ago forgot how to cry, and of one man who made him cry again. It is a power bred by the first emperor that has been passed down from generation to generation. When a person with this power sheds his tears, it will mean that a miracle has happened. Some person had heard that the tears of royalty worked miracles, but to see it with his own eyes was truly mesmerizing. A guy was sitting covered in blood and a dead girl was lying next to him. The king approached the boy and told him to think hard about his actions. He asked if this woman was the one accused of killing the emperor. The boy looked at the dead girl and there was no way he could believe that his mum would do that. The boy knew something was wrong here and he had seen it the day before his father had died. The boy talked about how this man is his uncle. The king talked about how losing his mother might be heartbreaking, but the king talked about how it meant the boy would be able to inherit the throne and become crown prince much sooner. So the king told the boy not to be broken over nothing like this. The king suggested that the boy hold on to his hand. The boy took the shard and pounced on the king. The prince realized that the king was smiling suspiciously as he left his father's room. The boy was crying. He was shattered. The queen barely opened her eyes and began to talk about how rank was not allowed to cry. The prince's tears were very precious. A lot of people would make them. It was impossible for the boy not to be sad, not to sympathize, not to suffer. The prince needed to be cold to everyone to forget his feelings altogether, that's what the Queen said. If the Crown Prince shed his tears over someone, it would mean that person was too precious to him, Lacrima Empire. Years later, after the death of the Emperor and Empress, time and people passed. Many people had forgotten the true meaning of tears and only longed for miracles that bring strength. But Riten, the current Emperor, did not use the tears of blessing, the power of which every Emperor must possess. Tears of blessing could also be shed by other members of the imperial family. Raising the empress who killed the emperor from the dead. Prince Ranksol Regnator was saying the same thing, although he possessed miraculous powers. But he looked down on all the people and only had a mocking arrogance in his eyes. The two servants were standing beside the prince and were saying that the young lady chosen as the crown princess candidate was on her way. There were rumours that as a result of this extinction of the fruits of the miraculous power, the empire might collapse, 
so everyone should take care of giving birth to the next generation to pass on the power to appease the people. The servants talked about how besides this child, there were several other ladies who had been banished and this girl was the only survivor with royal blood. The servants were still chatting and didn't notice the crown prince approaching them. One of the servants began to talk about how she had neglected her authority and had unknowingly loosened her tongue. The crown prince didn't want to hear anything and asked to inform the Hofmeister that these servants could only return after they shut up. The crown prince had not shed a single tear during his entire government, his whole nature making the blood run cold in his veins. No one understood how such a person could rule the empire. An elderly man stood in the room and looked at the parrot. An old man was saying that there seemed to be all sorts of unusual creatures in the country, such as a dye that could change its body size freely. Suddenly, a door opened and a guy came out of it, saying that his highness was on his way here. The old man couldn't believe that the crown prince wanted to greet them, and in the same room was the princess. The old man said that it would have been a real relief for him if the girl had not run out crying. The girl began to ask about the prince coming here to see them, and afterward decided to go over to the bird and pet it. The princess couldn't believe that the bird was locked in such a small cage, and called the people mean. The girl told the bird not to worry about anything, for although it was not in her plans for the prince to come here, she said that now the girl and the bird would be free to fly away. The princess wanted to get the key and open the bird's cage with the key. She was very excited about it and wanted to do it as soon as possible. The crown prince stood next to his elderly aide and talked about how this transcends all laws of nature, as this bird can change the size of its body. In other countries, it is considered sacred. The elderly man said that it was an unusual gift for his majesty and he had never shown it to anyone before. The prince was telling the elderly man to be sure it would not cause further problems for him. The man talked about how this bird could not cause any problems. He pointed to the door and talked about the bird being in that room. He then wanted to pull out the key, but he couldn't figure out where it was. The prince heard the sound of wings and the door to the room was opened. His highness heard that someone else was in the room and as soon as he opened the door, he saw a girl stroking a huge bird. There was no way anyone could understand what had happened. The girl stood with the parrot and asked him to fly right now. The prince yelled to the girl about where she was trying to escape to. The girl wanted to jump on the bird, but she didn't have time, and the crown prince grabbed her leg and pulled her towards him. He began to ask the girl how she managed to get inside and remain unnoticed, and to touch the things that belonged to the imperial family. The prince, in a fit of anger, asked the girl if she realised what she had just done. Back when she was a little girl, this girl's mum disappeared. She doesn't remember her face at all. Her father raised her alone. The hard leg of her life began after the girl's father died. She asked the man for money for the funeral, but he started telling her that her father had caused him a lot of damage and he was not going to give money to the girl. As a result, the girl had to leave her homeland and while she was somehow surviving, working as a maid in one of the noble houses, later she met a man who began to tell her that from now on she is not obliged to do such dirty work, and now the girl will become his adopted daughter and lie of the Archduke's house. The girl was lucky enough to be adopted by the Archduke. She thought it was a miracle and the girl could be happy again, but no such luck. All the servants talked about how the girl looked like the mistress who had passed away. Some were not happy to have the girl in their home, and talked about how the king had no sense of dignity. The Archduke apologised and told Revere that she really had no choice but to go to the Crown Prince. Up until now, the girl had lived to fulfil the role of an Archduchess, but now the girl had to dedicate her life entirely to the Crown Prince, regardless of the girl's opinion. The girl didn't expect at all to be contacted and taken here like some kind of sack. Rivera couldn't take it anymore. She didn't understand why she couldn't live her life the way she wanted to. The girl had heard of all the people saying that she was the last remaining noblewoman and if they were trying to marry her off by any means, she would make it seem as if they were creating reasons why they wouldn't want to take her. The crown prince lay down and asked the girl who she was. But Rivera did not have time to say anything because the bird started flying all over the room. The girl looked at the prince and from his mere look, she was scared. The crown prince called the girl an unusual petty thief and added that he had never seen her in the palace. 
Rivera did not hesitate to shout for her arrest. The girl talked about how, just as the king had said, she had dared to touch an item belonging to the imperial family. Rivera talked about how she had committed a very serious offence. She was saying that despite her status, it would be difficult for the crown prince to marry such a girl. The crown prince looked at the girl and realised who she was. He asked if the girl was the one who came from the Archduchy of Duarte. The girl stood up and said her name was Rivera Ventus Duarte. The crown prince began to ask the girl who told her to do this. Rivera began to say that she had done this deed of her own volition. The girl thought that she would rather go to prison than marry this man. The prince asked the girl about the fact that she had then willingly done this act to avoid engagement to him. He thought it was quite interesting, because so far everyone wanted only power. And after the crown prince came close to Rivera and asked her about the fact that she did not need a high status, the guy had an interesting thought in his head, because in a good way, he should punish the girl. But there was another way, which was the best solution. The guy pushed the girl away and called the guards. He said to grab the girl. Rivera had no way of knowing why things had turned out this way. The crown prince said that he would visit the girl later, and the agony and pain would help her realize what she had done. The girl didn't believe that it could be possible. Eventually, he locked the girl in a dungeon Rivera didn't like the guy's horrible temper. She thought he was trying to intimidate her. She thought she was going to get slapped a couple times with her dress and kicked out, but she was left sitting in the dungeon. The girl couldn't believe that the prince was going to come to her. She did not understand why she was sitting here, for she would rather be beaten with a whip and thrown out. There were some sounds in the dungeon. The girl hoped that there was definitely none in it, because it made her shiver. She didn't know who the prince was and decided it was better to be in the dungeon than with him. But the sounds weren't coming from the prince. The girl was very much frightened and did not realise who was in the dungeon. Some guy walked up to a girl and apologised for scaring the girl because he didn't mean it. The guy opened his face and looked at the girl and then asked her what her name was and if she was Rivera. A servant came running into the crown prince's room saying that there was trouble. The prince told him to keep quiet and go straight to business. The servant spoke of Rivera disappearing from the dungeon and she was nowhere to be found. A girl was sitting in a chair asking a guy about whether he was the second prince. The guy's name was Tatio and he was the second prince of La Crima. The girl asked him if she could go out whenever she wanted. Tatio told her not to worry about it and his majesty forgave the girl's offence. Rivera could not believe it. Then Tatio started talking about the girl's right to become a crown princess. The girl could not understand why she could become a crown princess. After all, she touched the things of the imperial family. And this is an incredibly grave crime. Takio said that the girl had indeed committed a sin. But the problem was that the crown prince was interested in the girl for the first time. Rivera didn't understand what interest could be talked about. And in any case, he was tormenting the girl. The girl realised that it turns out, now she will not be able to avoid an engagement to the prince. Tatio was not sure about that, and afterwards asked if Rivera really wanted to avoid this marriage. The girl started to cheer. She had been too open about her dislike. Tatio talked about how usually all the ladies were very annoyed that they didn't get the crown princess status. Takio called the girl an unusual person. The girl talked about something she wanted to ask. The guy was all ears. Rivera asked the prince why he brought the girl here specifically. Tatio smiled and decided that a secret should be shared with the girl that would remain only between them and no one else. The boy replied that it was an imperial order. There was only one way by which the girl could avoid marrying the prince. Rivera would need to get his tears. If it succeeds in doing so, their marriage will be dissolved and His Majesty the Emperor will reward the girl generously. Of course, for the Crown Prince, this conversation must remain a secret, because as soon as he finds out that the girl had received an imperial order, he would immediately kick Rivera out. The girl didn't know how to do that. Takio said there was one of two things to do. Either marry him or get his tears, and the girl has no right to choose. Rivera will have to get the tears of a cold-blooded man, but she could not understand how to do it. Takio told the girl that he understands her feelings, and the girl thinks it is unfair as the girl was left with no choice, so it is hard to accept the conditions. But the prince said he would help the girl. 
Before he could say anything else, the crown prince ran into the room to the prince and Rivera. Takio turned to his brother and told him that he had already arrived. The crown prince walked very close to the girl and asked why she was here. The girl replied that she was no longer a criminal and so she could no longer sit in the dungeon. The crown prince could not understand what was going on, but Takio said it was true. Takio said about his majesty emperor forgave her mistake, and moreover she is the one who can become Takio's bride in the future. The girl didn't understand what was going on with the atmosphere and whether they had a bad relationship or not. The crown prince turned to the girl and asked her about whether she wanted to be addressed politely. Rivera yelled and told the crown prince that she didn't care if it was polite or otherwise, because she just wanted to go back. The crown prince told the girl about, then their conversation would go well. The boy told the girl that from tomorrow, she would start thinking that it would be better to stay in the dungeon, because Rivera would definitely regret it. The girl couldn't believe it. She didn't care. All that mattered to her was that she never marry this man. Tatio asked the girl how she was, and if she was willing to accept the guy's help. Rivera, without a second thought, asked the guy to help her. Tatio called the girl a pretty interesting person and laughed, as Tatio was once again convinced of why his brother had chosen Rivera in the first place. Takio kissed the girl's hand and told her that he would help her for a reason, and he will help her if she fulfills his condition. Would the girl be able to acquire many allies around the palace? It was a simple task. It would be good if Rivera could induce the tears of the prince, and also if the girl would report on the progress of the task. And Tatio also added that they would be fine, even regardless of the content of the reports. Rivera asked the guy again if that was true. The girl thought about how it seemed like an easy request, but it was hard to call it a good one. Perhaps this assignment was due to some bad relationship between the prince and his majesty. Takio told the girl that he wouldn't deny it, but he didn't think they were talking about it now. And if the girl was curious, she should listen to the guy carefully, as there would often be glimpses of fragments with Takio during the story as well. The girl was in some place, and afterwards she began to spread out the paper and tell her to get to work. There was a proverb that said that it was better to see once than to hear seven times. Tatio spoke in the girl's mind that first of all, it was a good idea for the girl to find out personally about her ward, and as much more as she could. Rivera had brought everything the prince had, but there weren't as many notes as she had thought. No matter how much suffering was in front of him, even if the prince videos someone about to die, he never cried. From his young age, everyone had already lost hope of that, so His Majesty E, to induce tears from the Crown Prince, took the following measures. The books read to him only contained tragic stories, but in the end, there was no effect. He was for five minutes not allowed to blink at all. But that didn't work either. He was served very spicy food that even adults could not eat properly. In addition, he was tickled for almost an hour, and then he was scared and even made to yawn. But all these attempts were unsuccessful. The girl could not believe that he was such an impenetrable person. It was an impossible task for the girl. Rivera thought about the fact that there was no way to make him cry at all. The girl decided to look at the recent entries, but what she noticed was that the page was torn out. There definitely couldn't be any more entries except for the ones that were torn out. The girl decided that she would have to ask other people about it all. The servants entered the library and didn't even notice the girl. They talked about how the candidate for Crown Princess seemed very strange to them, especially if you look at her eyes. One of the servants said that her eyes were like a normal person's, and it looked creepy. The servants thought it was better to lock Rivera up behind bars. The servant replied that there is nothing wrong with this girl, and she is just a child with a small flaw. The servants talked about how they now understood why she never wanted to show her face in public, as there was a lot of talk about it. Some said that the girl was actually born half monster, half human, and some said that because of her strange magic, she was able to attract the crown prince. After a while, the servants noticed the girl. They started smiling at her and asked if she needed help. Rivera said that everything was fine and she was just worried about something. The servant was all ears, the girl was worried about the words said to her, that the girl had some strange power. Rivera told the servant that she had heard all their conversation and that the girl herself did not know that she had any power. 
The servants were surprised by this and began to say that they did not mean it. Many people had wrong opinions about Rivera and she was constantly surrounded by other people's views. But in spite of this, she always fought back bravely and returned everything with interest. To survive among the nobles who did not want to accept the girl, Rivera always did so. It became her habitual way of life. The girl yelled at the servants and then decided to get away from them, but she didn't have time as she crashed into the crown prince. She apologized and said she wasn't looking where she was going. The prince told the girl that her facial expression looked rude. Afterward, he asked the girl if she often reads books. The crown prince looked at the book and after stepped on it. The girl had no way of understanding what he was doing. It was the first time she had ever seen a man step on a book. Rivera said she had to leave because she didn't think it was possible to talk to the crown prince directly. The prince told the girl that it seems like the girl likes to act like a rat. No matter what he caught the girl doing, he always says exactly that. It sometimes annoys the girl, but now she decided to say thank you for that. The crown prince asked the girl why she was here alone and where her servants were. Rivera replied that she was more comfortable being alone and the prince had nothing to worry about. The crown prince thought about the girl's words and then asked if other people were ignoring her. The girl said that was not true at all and she did not know that the crown prince would be so concerned about the girl. The prince decided that the girl wasn't lying and said that in that case everything was fine and then added that as long as Rivera was wandering around all alone, she should be careful. The girl was angry with him but decided that she couldn't just let him go and this was her chance. Rivera turned the guy around and decided to ask him something. Rivera started asking the guy why he shouldn't take a break and rest tomorrow. The crown prince didn't understand what the girl wanted him to do. Rivera replied that sitting at work all the time was wrong and the girl had a play she wanted to see. The crown prince told the girl that she should realize the situation he is in. The girl talked about how no matter how unlucky a guy was with his surroundings, he should take a better look at the people around him would be able to notice that many people wished him well. The guy didn't understand why he was. Rivera was talking about how if he didn't make her a promise, she wouldn't let him go. The crown prince used force, but the girl didn't like it. It wasn't fair. The girl told the boy about how they would definitely go see the play the day after tomorrow, and she would really look forward to it. Rivera wondered if the crown prince had heard her. The girl had no intention of remaining as others wanted her to be, because that would hardly make things any better. That torn out sheet definitely spelled out the crown prince's weakness. And if the girl kept at it, she would someday favour him and find a way to bring him to tears. The next day, the crown prince lay in his bed. Screams were heard outside the door, the servant asking Rivera to wait until the prince woke up himself. The girl asked about the fact that couldn't she just wake him up? After all, it was time for him to wake up since it had been a while. Rivera walked up to the guy and started calling out to him. The crown prince looked at the girl. Rivera started to ask the guy if she forgot the promise the guy made to her last time. The prince looked at the girl and asked her not to drill him with such a displeased look. The girl said that she still wouldn't let go of the guy until he stood up and later she asked if the guy had bought the tickets. The crown prince stood up and started asking the girl if she was ashamed to show up in such an outfit in front of a man. Rivera asked why, since the guy wasn't interested in her as a woman, so it was okay and she could wear it. Rivera started telling the guy that he must have thought something obscene and told him that he should be ashamed of it. The girl said that they should definitely go to the play. It's a wonderful drama that is famous throughout the empire and Rivera thinks that even your majesty will be able to laugh heartily at the comic moments or cry to tears at the sad scenes of this production. The crown prince did not understand why, and the girl answered that the best prima donna of the empire, Cassia Salas, was playing there. The crown prince was telling the girl that this was the first time he had heard the name. Rivera was amazed that the guy didn't know who she was. Beautiful voice, breathtaking acting, mesmerizing attractive looks, once one looks at her acting, one becomes addicted to it and wants to see her again and again, because it is as if she hypnotizes. Even aristocrats say it's hard to snatch a single extra ticket to a play starring Kasia. To be able to get into a play that she's in is a great honor. The crown prince looked at the girl and told her that he had no interest in knowing who she was. 
Rivera said that everyone says that at first, but when they see her play with their own eyes, they change their minds. The Crown Prince talked about how you could tell right away from the girl's reaction that she didn't want to show the play to the guy, but to see it for herself. Rivera was angry and talked about how the prince shouldn't think so badly of people. She was trying to get to this play for the prince's sake too. The guy didn't understand why the girl was dragging him there, since she could have gone there alone. The girl looked at the guy and decided to ask him what about him. Rivera was saying that the guy had no antipathy or liking for anything and afterward decided to ask if he had anything he liked at all. The Crown Prince began to ask Rivera why she was asking that, since it had nothing to do with their conversation. Rivera said the Prince answered as she expected. And the fact that it seems the Crown Prince's life is so boring that he wants to avoid even answering the question. The guy started to tell the girl that she really knows how to hit the nail on the head. Rivera asked the guy if there was another reason why he didn't want to talk about the topic. The girl told the guy that most likely they will be together for a long time. So the girl decided that it would be right to get to know each other better. Because without that, it will be quite difficult to build a normal relationship. And the easiest way to get closer is to find common points of contact. For example, in the form of common interests. When the Crown Prince talks about what he likes, when communicating, he can be more open with the person with whom you often talk about common interests. So the girl wants to know what the prince likes in order to get closer to him and begin to understand him at least a little better. And later, Rivera looked at the weather and asked the prince if it was nice. Meanwhile, the Crown Prince looked at the girl and thought about her words and decided that he did not want to get close to her at all. After a while, when the girl and the prince arrived at the appointed place, they were called and told to go behind the people. Some little girl came up to Rivera and asked her what she had come for and not to meet Di with Kasia. One of the men started yelling at the child and saying how low-born a child dares to say such a thing. Rivera called out to the man and told him it was okay. The girl approached the child and asked her if she wanted something. The child told the girl that he wanted to ask the girl something, if she would let her do it. The child said that she admires her sister Kasia very much and it would be great if the child could watch her perform on that big stage and shine, getting into her role. But the girl realised that she could hardly do it because she could not afford the tickets. The child wanted to see her very badly, but she understood that since she could not do it, she began to ask Rivera to give her the colour, and afterwards the girl asked if Rivera could do it. One man began to say that he understood what the girl wanted, but however he did not think that such high-ranking guests would agree to this silly request. Child said it was okay, and she just wanted to give those flowers to Kasia. Rivera agreed, and asked the child if she had any other request for the girl. The girl with a smile on her face started telling the girl to tell the girl to tell her that when she grows up, she will be like Kasia. The child wanted to become a famous singer, just like her sister Kasia. The servant, who at first did not want to help the girl, began to tell Rivera that she had a very sick heart, since she had decided to accept the request of such a child. The Crown Prince stood nearby and told the servant that the girl did not have a big heart. She was just stupid. The Crown Prince began to ask the girl about the fact that this child was not a resident of the Empire. The girl said that she had realised it at once and that the child was a foreigner, just like Kasia herself. Changing her opinion of foreigners is one of the things Kasia has managed to accomplish. Maybe that is the reason why the girl has developed a love for Kasia. Rivera smiled and told the prince that it seemed Kasia was becoming more and more interested in him. And afterwards, the girl said that she had to leave the guy for a while to give the flowers and pass on the words of that child. The crown prince began to ask if their seats were far away. He wanted to sit down as soon as possible because he was very tired. Rivera was jealous even of herself that she could accompany the lad to such a play and it couldn't have been more gratifying. The Crown Prince was telling the girl that she was tiring him even more, and if there were seats for only one person, and they were at a distance from the other seats, it would be even more beautiful. Behind the carriage on which the Prince and the girl arrived, someone was standing listening to them. This person discussed with someone a plan of action and what he should do. And after the person decided to check everything and act without too much fuss, and if there was an obstacle, they would get rid of it immediately on the spot. 
Rivera stood on the top row next to the crown prince. The girl said that she had never seen so many people. The girl looked and saw that almost everyone had come with their lovers. The crown prince looked at the girl and couldn't understand why she was rejoicing like a child. The way the girl was pondering was amazing. The crown prince didn't realize that a girl from a noble family could be so modest. Rivera decided that she would go see Casia for a bit and afterward asked the crown prince where he would be. The guy looked at the girl with some sarcasm. Rivera said that the guy might run away because he was annoyed to be here. The guy looked at the girl and told her to keep her thoughts to herself. For her to do that, Rivera would have to trust the guy. Afterwards, the girl remembered what she wanted to say and realized that the problem had to be solved in one way. Rivera took her thread and tied the crown prince's hands and then said that now she would be calm and decided to leave. The crown prince looked after the girl and said that she was completely stupid. Rivera stood with a bouquet of flowers and thought about what to do. She was very nervous because it was the first time they met in person. The girl didn't know when Kasia could come down from the stage and what kind of character she was. She could be surprisingly cold and arrogant, but she would still be welcome one way or another. Rivera thought about how to start greeting her. After all, the girl needed to make a good impression. In fact, she wanted to see her as soon as possible. The girl waited for her. She didn't seem to be there, but Rivera waited anyway and hoped she would be back soon. It seemed a little strange to the girl because the show was about to start and would it be all right if the main singer wasn't there? When Rivera asked for directions to Cassia's place, she was shown the place, but there was no one in it. The girl wondered what could have happened because Cassia could have already been on the stage. Rivera decided that she couldn't stand here any longer. The girl wanted to see her very badly, but she had to look around. And if they didn't meet now, it wouldn't be a big deal and Rivera would find her later. The corridor was quite dark. The girl wondered why it was like this and if it could be because of the performance. After a while, the girl noticed the chaplain. He was the administrator of the theater and his duties include escorting to the place. Rivera decided to approach him she started to say something, but the administrator did not seem to hear it. So Rivera decided to follow him. As soon as the girl went after him, the receptionist became very angry and afterward told his assistant what we had discovered. In a remote room was Kasia with her mouth closed and some other person who was helping the administrator. Rivera couldn't believe it in any way and decided to quickly run away from the place. The receptionist yelled and told her to get caught. The girl had no way of knowing what was going on. Rivera shouted that there were kidnappers in the hall and started asking if anyone was there. But before she could do anything else, the girl crashed into a man. He was at the back of the carriage, eavesdropping on the conversation. The man turned to the girl, covered her mouth and then looked at her. The guy grabbed the girl and covered her mouth and afterwards said about how if she was from a noble family, she would have sat silently in the theater. But as it is, she only complicates things. Rivera didn't believe it all she was afraid that something might happen to her. The kidnapper was telling the girl that no one else would help her and that she wasn't allowed to stay here. Meanwhile, the crown prince sat in the hall and talked in his mind about the girl being late. He didn't realize what he would do if he was summoned. He also thought that Rivera would miss the start. Everyone in the audience began to murmur and talk about the curtain not going up. The crown prince sat in his chair and talked about how something was not good for him. After a while, the crown prince had already taken off the knot the girl had made him. One of the people was standing near the hall and was shocked that Kasia was missing. The girls talked about finding the dressing room, but there was no sign of the girl. No one knew how this could happen because it was a very important performance and even the family of emperors had come. The guy talked about how he wanted to retire, but he didn't understand how he could be set up like that. The guy was talking about how he shouldn't have let strangers in here. All this time, the crown prince was standing behind the guy and asked the guy about whether the actress was missing. As soon as the guy noticed his highness, he started talking about how he didn't know what was going on. Coincidentally, a woman was missing and the crown prince decided to ask if anyone had seen her since he had come with her. Everyone was very scared and after a while, a boy came running to everyone shouting that they had found a bouquet of flowers at the end of the corridor by the back door. The warden was shocked that it was a yellow freesia and afterward he decided to ask the boy what he was doing there. The boy said he was just wandering around aimlessly. 
The Crown Prince called the warden and talked about how he wasn't going to get involved, but if the aristocracy got involved, it would change everything, and afterwards he told the warden to shut up and listen to him. The Crown Prince said to close the theatre and bring him the register. He decided to look into it. People wanted to leave the hall, but no one wanted to open the doors. People complained that the curtains themselves had not been raised for a long time, and now that people wanted to leave, they were not going to be let out. People were very angry and said they were being bullied. Everyone was shouting for the chief to be called. The chief looked at the crown prince and said that he was the one in charge now. The crown prince agreed and said he would calm down all those noisy people himself. The prince checked the register. However, all the people recorded were in the audience and also the guy was told that no one had seen anyone leaving the theatre. The guy figured that Kasia could possibly have just gone out somewhere. However, he didn't understand where the woman had gone. Everyone was shouting and making noise. Aristocrats with busy schedules had spared no precious time to come here, and wasn't it polite to do so? The guy thought of at least asking Kasia to come out to them, and by explaining the situation and apologising to them, the guy thought that it might well have settled the situation. The guy asked people how they felt about the idea. All the people agreed with him and said that Kasia should come out because everything has its measure. Everyone was saying that until Kasia came out, they would not make a move. The crown prince looked at this guy and started asking the chief who he was. The warden started talking about how Naraf Lopez is like a precious purse to them. He is a regular at the theatre. In a way, he is a sponsor of Kasia as he gave money to expand the theatre. The crown prince was very surprised by this. The warden said that they had recently bought the building next door and now they were in full swing to expand the theatre. The Crown Prince asked the warden if it was possible to enter the building without leaving this one. The warden began to talk about how there was one passageway that led there. The boss shouted and said that without the Crown, Prince's further resolution of the situation could get out of hand because it was now that all the visitors were waiting for explanations. The Crown Prince said that this was the way to do it, but first it would be fine to find the missing actress, which is actually what the guy decided to do. But at the same time, the Crown Prince said that he would like to take some of the people in return. The Prince began to say that now those whom he pointed out would silently follow him to the building next door. That building next door was a very good place to hide something, or even someone. Naturally, for a person who is perfectly oriented in the building and knows all the entrances and exits. The man who was introduced as the sponsor of the missing actress deliberately decided to try to kidnap her. The Crown Prince realised that something was wrong here. He decided that he should confirm the speculation himself. The kidnappers looked at Rivera. He didn't understand what was so difficult about stealing a woman without witnesses. The administrator said that he didn't know at all, that if she went missing, that anyone would even look for her. The administrator began to ask how they should proceed. The ringleader talked about how they couldn't get the money unless they handed over that woman. The guy started telling the administrator that they should go ahead with the original plan as planned, and he would deal with Rivera himself. After a while, when the administrator left, the guy started asking the girl if she thought her intervention would make a difference. Rivera was yelling at the guy to stay away from her. He told the girl that it would be better for them not to cross paths with each other at all, because the girl realised that she could not do anything alone. The guy didn't understand why she was sticking around, and then he pulled out a knife and started looking at it. The guy looked at the weapon and started talking about how it was good to have a weapon, because it also shimmered nicely. And he also said that weapons could easily shut up overly talkative mouths like a girl's. River started asking him what they were going to do with Kasia. It amazed the guy that the girl still worried about others in a situation like this. The boy decided to give the girl an answer, since she was going to die soon anyway. He began to talk about how the Count ordered it disgusting loser, hungry for revenge. All because he keeps proposing to Kasia, but he keeps getting turned down. In the end, the solution was to kidnap her off the stage so that the theatre would suffer heavy losses. The guy thought that the girl was not so stupid and she should understand that if it happened, the theatre would go bankrupt and then Kasia would run to the Count with her tail between her legs. It was fun for the kidnappers. If everything goes as the Count planned, her career as the best actress will be over 
even if she tells the truth and no one else can believe her. In the eyes of the aristocracy, she's no more than a stranger or a clown entertaining them. Rivera didn't understand how they could even do that, for after that, they were as good as beasts. The boy didn't understand so what of it. He decided it would be better to be worse than a beast, but still get paid money for the work, while accomplishing anything and becoming anything. With a sneer, the boy began to tell the girl to worry about herself. Little by little, the guy was starting to get annoyed with the girl's game of Mother Teresa. He didn't plan to kill anyone, but he would have to, because the Count should never know that there were witnesses. The guy decided that he would try to make it less painful if the girl didn't resist. Rivera thought about her plan of action. She didn't want to give up, so she took the vase and hit the guy hard on the head. Rivera began to tell him that she was not going to comply with anything that criminals like them would say. The girl decided to run for the door faster, but the guy got up and ran after the girl. He was telling her about how she couldn't just run away and that eventually no one would come to bed someone like her. So the guy told the girl to stop getting on his nerves. Someone opened the door and started talking about Kasia showing up and she was here. The guy was angry and couldn't understand what was going on at all. People started asking the guy how they should act and what they should do. Someone not far away from Rivera started asking if there was anyone else besides these people. Rivera recognized that voice. It was familiar to her. It was the Crown Prince. The girl decided to shout his name as hard as she could, but one of the boys covered her mouth. The Crown Prince heard it at once and went to the sound and afterward opened the door and saw no one. The girl and the guy were sitting in the closet. Rivera wanted to scream as much as she could, but there was no way she could do it. The Crown Prince thought that there was something suspicious in this room and then slowly began to approach the closet. After a while, Kasia stood in the room and screamed that she had done nothing wrong and it wasn't fair. The girl was screaming about how it was all their fault and they were the ones who kidnapped her. The administrator didn't understand what he was even talking about. People were talking about how they had just found it themselves and wanted to stop the girl from trying to escape. The crown prince looked at the kidnappers. One of the guys was talking about how it made no sense for them to steal the girl and also his highness the prince was a witness to that because they were just theatre goers like everyone else. Kasia was screaming that someone must have hired them because these people wanted to kidnap her and then sell her into slavery or worse. The kidnappers talked about not believing the girl and said she was brazenly lying. Kasia talked about how these people were brazenly lying, but the kidnappers talked about how they didn't know anything at all. The crown prince thought over their words, but there was no trust in his eyes. And after a while, the guy pulled out a black ribbon and started telling the kidnappers that they didn't know where it came from either. All this time, Rivera and the guy were in the closet. He started telling the girl to listen to him carefully. And afterwards, he started saying that if they found him now, Rivera shouldn't think about the fact that he would just let her go. And right this second, he would slit the girl's throat if Rivera tried to make a sound. Rivera could clearly feel how much her body was shaking with fear she was very scared and she didn't want to die. The girl prayed that the crown prince would look into the closet just once. She was very close to him. The kidnappers stood next to the prince and talked about how they knew nothing and it was the first time they had heard of the girl. Kasia screamed at the crown prince about how all these people were lying. The crown prince began to ask how they should proceed because the girl that Kasia was talking about was nowhere to be found. Even in the other rooms, she was also absent. The warden began to ask the Crown Prince about going back to the main theatre building. The Crown Prince began to say that there was nothing that could be done and they would have to go back to the main building. Rivera couldn't believe that the Prince would just leave without even checking the closet. The girl understood that the Crown Prince was able to find the ribbon. But she didn't believe that if he couldn't have a good look around the room or if the guy just decided to flap his tongue and do nothing. The girl didn't realize that was it really that hard to check this closet. The prince's footsteps began to get farther away. The girl thought she couldn't survive anymore, but that wasn't the case. The crown prince ran with all his might and stabbed the closet with his sword. When the prince saw Rivera, he was very much shocked by it and didn't realize how she was in it. The sword hit the kidnapper's head and he died. Rivera looked at the boy and didn't understand how he could do that. 
The Crown Prince began to say that it was obvious, and if you want to hide, the closet is the best hiding place. And after a while, the prince asked the girl that she thought that the prince would leave her alone and would not even rescue her. The Crown Prince was talking about how Rivera had brazenly dragged him to the theatre and then ran off to carry something and disappeared, even though he had agreed to go out with someone other than the guards. The guy wanted to talk about how worried he was, but he didn't have time to do it because the girl hit the Crown Prince on the stomach. Casia looked at all this and didn't understand why Rivera hit the man who decided to save her. The Crown Prince started asking the girl what she was doing and why she did it. But Rivera didn't want to say anything and just hugged the guy. She started to talk about how she was very scared and was very afraid that she wouldn't be found. The Prince asked the girl if she was crying. Rivera said that it was not so important now and afterwards began to ask to be untied as soon as possible. The Crown Prince began to remember the words that he should not be sad, not sympathize, not suffer. He should be cold to everyone and should forget about his feelings. Rivera was trembling and yet she was acting all tough. The Crown Prince began to tell the girl that it displeased him when Rivera cried and he began to ask the girl not to cry in front of him anymore. And after a while, the Crown Prince looked at the other people and asked why they were staring at him. And then he said to rather grab that guy and tie up those kidnappers too. After this, the case was closed. By combining the testimony and confessions of the criminals, it was possible at once to find the Count who had ordered all this to be done. And afterwards, he was also captured and punished. And the most important thing that was learned was that the original plan was not to capture Cassia in the name of revenge, but on the contrary, in another way, they wanted to blackmail the family of Rivera, led she is the daughter of the Archduke. And most likely, they intended to shake down as much money as possible. Rivera stood next to Cassia and asked for her forgiveness, because she didn't want it to be like this. And then she gave Cassia the flowers and said that a girl who liked Cassia very much wanted to give them to her and wanted Rivera to give them to you. Even though the Earl was punished, however, Cassia even began to demand compensation for the stress she had endured. Cassia thought about the whole situation. She realised that my lady was looking for her for a reason, and she wanted to convey something so touching. After Cassia heard the whole thing and took the flowers, she cried hard, and Rivera was speechless and couldn't say another word, even though she had questions for her. After a while, Rivera was already in the castle with the Crown Prince. All the servants began to tell the girl about what they had heard happened and began to ask the girl if she was all right. Rivera answered that she was fine and she didn't need to worry so much about her because she was perfectly fine. Suddenly, the servant noticed a cut on the girl. Rivera began to calm the girl and told her that she was really fine and that the wound did not hurt so much now. A little while later, the Archduke came up to the girl and started asking about who did it and if it was those bastards. Rivera looked at her father and didn't understand what he was doing and why he had come to this castle. The girl was shocked. Rivera shouted at the Archduke to wait. Calm down and then go to the Crown Prince because the Prince is probably busy. But the Archduke shouted and said that nothing is more important to him than this because his precious daughter was injured and stabbed. So he can't just let it go. The Archduke said that he absolutely had to know everything that had happened from beginning to end. So he immediately ran into the Crown Prince and began to say that he had an urgent, urgent conversation. The servant couldn't understand why he had made such a fuss over his daughter's injury and rushed into the Prince's house. The Crown Prince began to ask the servant that when he learned that she was injured and immediately decided to come to the Imperial Palace, the servant told the boy that it was because Mrs. Rivera did not want to explain what had happened. So the Archduke decided to come to the Crown Prince at the same minute to get an explanation from the Prince. Rivera said to the Archduke that this they could discuss by themselves and the Crown Prince could be left out of it. Jerome Dukes Duarte, Archduke with a mighty army and vast territory, the second most powerful man in the empire. Known for being a good strategist, as well as being a great man who contributed to the prosperity of his family. But despite this, he has a great flaw, and that is his obsession with overprotecting and protecting his adopted daughter. The Archduke asked why she herself was unwilling to tell him everything in detail and whether Rivera thought that this poor was really some trifle. 
he spoke of the fact that a young lady of the Archduke's family had been stolen, after which she had been wounded. The Archduke was telling the girl that the girl did not want the guy to just leave them alone. The Crown Prince started asking the Duke what he wanted to do, bring them to the manor and torture them. The Prince said that they had already been punished enough, but the Archduke still told Rivera that they had dared to hurt her, and it shouldn't make any difference what he would do to these people. The Archduke needed only one answer from the Crown Prince as to whether his daughter would be safe if it happened again. The Crown Prince turned away and did not say a word. The Archduke began to talk about how he had made a mistake when he made the decision to send the girl here. Rivera began to ask her father what he planned to do. The Archduke started talking about how he just thought that if he came to the Imperial Palace, he could have a normal discussion with him and then leave quietly. But since it didn't work out, he had no other choice. He spoke to Rivera about how he didn't want the girl to be with His Highness any further. He also added that she should go away with him, as Rivera would not be safe here, and he decided to settle the formalities of the engagement himself. Rivera could not understand how the Archduke allowed her to leave just like that. She didn't want to marry him, but she didn't want to leave. Rivera decided to tell the Archduke that she wanted to stay here, because the Duke had originally sent the girl to the Imperial Palace against her will, and now he suddenly wanted to take the girl back. The girl didn't realize how long she would be a toy being dragged here and there. Rivera apologized to the Archduke that she had put herself in danger and afterwards said that she would be more careful in the future. So Rivera asked him to reconsider and agree to leave the girl here. After a while, the Archduke agreed and said that the girl had not changed a bit. The Archduke didn't understand why Rivera didn't want to accept her father's help until now and whether she could really manage on her own. Her father had said that it would not be easy for her to deal with many things and people on her own. For the world was not made up of good things, and the girl should have realized that by now, when her life was in danger. The Archduke talked about the fact that she is his daughter, and that is why the girl has every right to just live her life in safety and comfort. And no one should laugh to hurt the girl, because the father wants to protect the girl. Rivera didn't say anything in response. Then the Crown Prince began to say that in that case, he would leave the girl in the care of His Highness. And also the Archduke apologized for his rudeness to the Crown Prince, and afterwards he said that it was time for him to go. The Crown Prince began to talk about hearing all his words. He decided that the Archduke was really right. Rivera asked the Crown Prince about what he also thinks as a father. To this, the guy answered that there was truth in his words. The Crown Prince began to talk about the fact that she was the daughter of a duke, and he wondered why she did not want to live the rest of her life in luxury and security, as he saw that the girl was not satisfied with something, and by the look of the girl it was clear that she did not want it at all. The girl did not answer the Crown Prince, and just kept silent. Then the guy came to the girl, touched her hair, and said that he wanted to give advice that you should listen to yourself more often, because this way you can develop your intuition better. But at the same time, the girl should not be forced to stay because of the prince, because Rivera does not attract him as a woman, and the girl should not build illusions. Rivera didn't understand where the crown prince got the idea that she was attracted to him at all. The girl said that even if she was in love with the guy, she wouldn't make such a decision just because she was in love. The girl just wants to make her own decision, not follow someone else's. The Crown Prince was talking about how hard it must have been for the Archduke to deal with a tomboy like the girl, and since their family squabbles were already over, the Crown Prince asked the girl to come out and leave her office. Rivera told the guy with anger that even if he had said the wrong thing, she wouldn't mind leaving his office herself. From the moment the girl began to be near the guy, strange things do not stop happening. Rivera ran out of the office on the street. She could not understand why all only say what to do. After all, the girl does not have time to get a word in edgewise. She did not understand how she would have to cause tears in the prince if she got angry, told him too much and left. Rivera did not understand what she should do next. Suddenly she heard some sounds and after a while a bird flew to her and sat on her hand. Tatio came to Rivera and asked her what she was doing here. He also said that he was looking for her and Rivera was here all this time. Rivera looked at Tatio and started to ask about the guy looking for her because of his worry. The guy talked about how he had heard that the girl had been kidnapped and had received death threats, 
so it was only natural to be worried in such a case. The girl talked about how she was indeed scared, but she was no longer expecting such an unexpected guest to come. Takio asked about the unexpected guest. The girl said about just someone she never thought she would see. Rivera started asking the guy where he got the little guy from. Takio looked at the bird and said that he found him lying unconscious near the Imperial Palace so he couldn't just leave him. The guy took care of the bird for a while and then let it go, but today it flew to Takio for some reason and was actively circling around, so he decided to follow the bird, and eventually it led to Rivera. The girl talked about how it was just adorable, because most likely the bird recognised the person who slew him, so it did not stop circling around the guy. Tatio talked about how he thought he should have followed him a little sooner. Rivera talked about how he was the reason Tatio was able to find the girl. The guy talked about how even though it was sad to let him go, he still had to do it. After looking at the girl for a bit, Tatio started talking about how he didn't really come just to see if Rivera was okay. The guy had something he wanted to give the girl and afterward asked Rivera to turn away for a couple minutes and not turn around until he said so. Rivera decided to stand the way Tatio said. After a while, Tatio took out a pendant from his hand, after apologising for being rude, and slowly decided to put it around the girl's neck. Rivera didn't understand why he did it, to which Tatio replied that he just wanted to give a gift to the girl, in honour of the fact that they got along. Rivera didn't understand how she should react in such a situation. She didn't know it at all. After all, she had never been treated like that before. The girl turned to Tatio, smiled and thanked him, because she didn't expect to get a gift. Takio talked about how it was a gemstone and couldn't be found anywhere else, though it wasn't such a big jewel or pearl. But since ancient times, it was believed to bring good luck and was often used as a guardian stone. So he wanted to give it to you, because Takio wouldn't always be able to be around the girl. Rivera wanted to add something, but Tatio was ahead of the girl and said that he wanted to give and take it as an amulet. He also hopes that he can help the girl in the future and will protect her, and Rivera will remember her boyfriend by looking at this amulet. Takio asked the girl to wear it always without taking it off, and the guy hoped that this amulet could keep the girl safe next time. Otherwise, if the girl got hurt again, it would be very sad because it was very important to the guy. He also thanked Rivera for the girl accepting his gift. The Archduke went up to His Majesty and saluted him. His Majesty asked the Archduke if he had come already, the Duke began to say that he had been waiting all the time for him to deign to visit the Archduke and afterwards apologised for her rudeness, for he was very much concerned about his daughter. So he wanted to check on her at once, so that he could come to His Majesty in peace. He began to say that he understood everything perfectly, and that he knew that the Archduke was very fond of his daughter, though it was ridiculous to His Majesty that a man like him should be called great. His Majesty did not understand how the Archduke could love him so much if she was not even related to him by blood, for he was really curious where this paternal love for her came from. And afterwards he decided to end this conversation and ask the Archduke why he had come here after all. The Duke replied that he wanted Rivera to return home, and if His Majesty was favourable to him. His Majesty began to say that this might be problematic, for thanks to the girl, he thought, the Archduke himself had become aware of how lively the Imperial Palace, which had been quiet before, had become. When this child entered the palace, it immediately turned the inside of the palace upside down, because nowhere in the world can you find a girl as bright and active as her. His Majesty also thought at first, which was fine to end there, but this time she was kidnapped while she was outside, all because she was unaccompanied. His Majesty was telling the Archduke that he should have realised that he could embarrass the Imperial family, if taking Rivera away now pressed especially since people aren't stupid, and everyone already knows what happened, so His Majesty told the guy to do him a favour and bear with him for a bit. The Archduke bowed and said that he would follow Your Majesty's will. The man began to tell the Duke that he was really grateful to the girl, because thanks to her, this troubled prince began to go out more often and more, at least not like a dead man. His Majesty said that he liked his daughter very much, and if he could, he would be glad to see her and the Archduke as his father-in-law but he said that it was up to the boy to decide. The man told the Archduke that he would like to tell the boy something. He decided to ask about lingering a bit longer and listening to an entertaining story in the castle at the Crown Prince's house. The girl entered the room and greeted everyone. After a while, 
the Archduke came up to the girl and put his arm around her shoulders. Afterward, he said about the fact that from now on, it would be Rivera's chaperone. This girl is still young, yet her abilities are excellent as she is a member of the elite army. The servant spoke of how she might be called Apis. Rivera looked at Apis and was very pleased with the accompanying knight. Rivera asked Apis to take care of her. The Archduke was telling the girl that no matter how much the girl would hate someone's presence, Rivera was sure to keep this child close to her. Rivera began to say that in any case, the order was already in effect and she certainly knew how to behave. The Archduke was angry and didn't understand why a sensible person like Rivera was always getting into such situations. Rivera looked at Apis and talked about how she was really a quiet child and she was embarrassed because she didn't know if everything was going to be okay because she was even smaller than her. Someone started knocking on the door. Rivera, with a smile on her face, started talking about going in. But after that, something started happening. A Apisa ran to the door and started to pull out her sword. But after a while, a Apisa looked at the bird that was flying around the room. Rivera started talking about how it was a friend of hers that she had been raising for some time now and it was more docile than the girl thought. A Apisa began to laugh at this. Rivera had an idiotic idea in her head and realized that she shouldn't judge people by their looks. Apisa is a cunning child and Rivera realized that she had better not think about running away. The bird began to fly and the girl realized she had to follow it. Apisa began to ask Rivera where they wanted to go. As everyone realized, the girl could not go outside and the only thing she could do was to see the crown prince's face. Rivera thinks he is deliberately avoiding the girl, but Rivera had an idea the crown prince had a maid named Kanu Rabe. She stood there and felt someone's gaze on her. It was Rivera who was looking at the maid. The girl was talking about how if he didn't meet her, she would do so, follow the maid. Apisa realized that she now understood why the master was in such despair. There was a tree in the imperial garden that the crown prince was sitting on. A servant girl was standing there, looking at the lad and asking him if he was going to be there all day. The crown prince began to ask Kanu if she had any problems. The maid looked at the prince and spoke of how there was one person from Lady Rivera who was coming here to meet the crown prince. The maid didn't know if it was impertinent or not, but she spoke of hearing that Apisa was currently in custody. That said, she was still a candidate for the crown prince's position, and the maid thought that the crown prince and the girl would become a married couple soon. The crown prince began to say that, if it was so, he should at least see her one more time. And he also added that if he knew it was impertinent to say that, then the maid should not have said it at all, for the lad was not at all interested in what the maid had in mind. The maid began to talk about how it was her mistake, and for that she apologized. The crown prince marveled that Kanu was a man who did not notice that he was being watched. Below, leaning against a tree was Rivera, who was talking about how amazing it was and she didn't understand how it was that the prince's man was supporting the girl. The crown prince began to ask about. Rivera followed the maid. The guy didn't even think about the fact that a pesky girl like Rivera would do such a thing. The girl looked at the prince and doubted she wanted to talk straight. Rivera asked the prince to come down and talk to the girl normally because she wasn't going to leave. The crown prince talked about how he doesn't want to do it. Rivera said that it was expected and then asked if she should announce it here. The crown prince was silent, and Rivera realized that she had no other choice, and there was nothing she could do but not to resort to it and choose the second method. The prince was telling the girl about the truly annoying things she was doing. A little while later, the bird grew up and put the girl up in a tree. The crown prince talked about it being too noisy, and the girl replied to the guy that it was his own fault. The prince had no way of understanding what the guards were doing at this time. Meanwhile, Apisa was already standing and dealing with the guards. Kanu didn't realize what was going on. She was very much afraid. Kanu saw the maid and started telling the girl that it wouldn't hurt too much and the girl would be in the same situation in seconds. At the same time, Rivera sat and asked the crown prince if he was curious how the girl was living till now. The guy just kept quiet and didn't say anything. Rivera started talking about how it was a bird she had let out when she first met the crown prince. She figured she should have told it from the beginning, how she met this bird. The guy was sitting in a tree talking to Rivera about how he wasn't stuck with the girl because he liked it. 
so it was okay that it was hard for them to face each other. The crown prince began to ask the girl why and wherefore she had come all the way here. And he didn't want to hear about the girl really wanting to marry the guy. Rivera covered her ears and started asking the guy what he was talking about, and she really didn't want all this. The crown prince realized that the girl didn't seem to like the idea either, and afterwards he said he was just kidding. Rivera didn't understand why such a prince was very problematic, and how he could joke around like that. The girl thought about the fact that if she went broke, she wouldn't have to look at it. But with all that said, the atmosphere was quite pleasant and she decided to start probing the ground. The girl talked about how she wasn't here because she liked him. She was here because she was curious about one thing. Last time she read some of your highness's notes, she saw all the orders and experiments. When Rivera read it, naturally she was curious. So she decided to ask the guy, why doesn't he try to use the abilities in a similar way? Those precious tears of blessing that could save people, the guy could just use them. And afterward, she asked if that wasn't the case. And afterward, the girl decided to ask if there was any other reason not to use tears. Usually everyone who asks this is divided into types. They either want to use the crown prince or remove him from his position. And Rivera wasn't that smart. The girl started asking the prince what he was thinking about and if there was anything strange in his mind. The guy didn't know that if he told, would she understand it all. No one knew what the real face of Emperor Ranton was. Most likely, this emperor killed the crown prince's father and blamed the guy's mother, and he saved the crown prince to most likely use his power. The guy looked at the girl's face. Rivera had a very strange reaction. The girl wanted to say something, but she couldn't say anything because the crown prince started telling the girl that she shouldn't care. Rivera started talking about how it was the first time she had ever seen him have that look on his face. She didn't realize what she had done wrong. Maybe she had asked or something. The crown prince went completely pale and didn't understand what was going on. Rivera realized that she couldn't leave him like this and she had to do something. Rivera decided that the best solution would be to hug her. The boy couldn't understand what to do, but the girl started talking about keeping him still because they might fall. The crown prince began to say that he would rather fall than sit in the girl's arms. Rivera talked about how the guy started first when the girl was scared. The crown prince ordered her not to make that face and hugged her. The guy looked at the girl and talked about how, as long as this woman is around, all business comes to a standstill. The crown prince took his finger and pressed the girl's forehead while supporting her waist. The guy looked at the girl and talked about keeping her distance as Rivera's face made him nervous. The girl sat down and started talking about how she had gotten the prince to stop shaking after all, and the girl was glad that she had at least had some effect on him. The crown prince was silent and afterwards spoke about how the emperor wanted his powers. But he has no idea what he can use them for, and then he told the girl that that's all he can tell the girl right now, and then the guy climbed down from the tree and told the girl that she could climb up, so she could climb down. Rivera sat in the tree and looked after the prince. She wondered if she had made it or not, but at least the girl noticed that the crown prince had softened. The girl was scared as her body itself rushed to embrace him. She realized that she had to be careful. Rivera realized that this was the crown prince and he knew how to make a face from which nothing could be understood. The girl had heard of the imperial family's tears rivaling each other, but the prince especially hates the emperor. So she understood why Tatio had asked her not to interfere. If bringing tears to the emperor, Rivera wondered what might happen. She had never once thought about it and thought it was no big deal. But for some reason it bothered her. In the room sat the crown prince and Rivera. The guy was telling the girl about them going abroad. Rivera didn't understand what that meant. And what about the probationary period? The guy talked about the probation period being over by the time he left in days. The crown prince looked at the girl and noticed how excited she was, like a country girl going abroad for the first time. Rivera had never been abroad. The crown prince and Rivera were standing in a room. Across from them was a girl who spoke of how honored it was to meet the crown prince and Rivera. It was the queen of Chrysius Claudia Minerva della Torre. Rivera looked at the queen and admired her. Claudia asked them to sit down as seats were prepared for them. Rivera sat in a chair and talked to Claudia about how she didn't think the queen of an entire country could be so young. 
The girl talked about how she had just come to the throne and had little experience, and afterward, the queen started asking Rivera about how much she knew about Chryseus. The girl started talking about how she knew that most of the citizens had blue hair and that this country did not engage in maritime trade. Claudia laughed and said that all this information is pure truth. This country is surrounded by ocean on three sides and is very developed with sea trade and fishing. Also, the country is rich as well as a huge lacrim empire. Rivera began to ask about what was wrong with the country, that they had called the crown prince and the girl. The lad talked about how Chryseus had remained neutral for many years, as trade accounted for half of the national industry, as she was not friendly with any country, but yet now she was going to create friendly relations with Lacrima. Everyone was wild to find out why this was so. The Queen was telling the Crown Prince that he had acutely picked up on it, so as befitted His Highness the Crown Prince, who would lead a great empire in the future. And afterward, Claudia began to talk about how they hadn't come all this way to discuss it, and wouldn't it be better to unravel what had accumulated over time. The Crown Prince was angry and told the Queen that they didn't come to be flirtatious, so he suggested they get to the point. Rivera talked about how politics is a scary thing, but afterward one of the men came up to the girl and asked if she wanted another bite. The girl took a bite and it was delicious. It was a special Chryseus fruit. The Queen dared not say something and afterward showed the Crown Prince a paper. It was the full contents of her proposal. She said it would be brief, and afterward she began to ask the prince to lend her tears of blessing. Rivera couldn't believe what the queen had said. Claudia talked about how she had heard that tears of blessing could be used to revive a dying person. The queen understood that the crown prince would not give them to just anyone, but she cordially asked him to lend them to her. Claudia began to tell the lad that for this they would cede him the straits and then began to ask him if he would agree to cooperate. Rivera looked at this and could not understand in any way what was going on. The girl realized that if she tried hard enough, she could get tears here. The crown prince and the girl stood next to the queen's servant. Rivera had learned that she would be sharing one room with the prince. The crown prince was not happy about this and asked the servant to bring them another room since they had not had their first night yet. The servant started talking about how he needed to get her ready. The crown prince was no longer interested in this. He put his arm around the girl's shoulders and said that tonight they would stay in the same room. Also, the prince added that they still have some things to talk about. Rivera was in the room. It was awkward for her because the crown prince said about them needing to talk, yet he continues to sit there and remain silent. Rivera realized that if she was also in this situation, she would sit brooding and not want to say anything. The Queen spoke about the talk of tears of blessing, and it surprises her. Her younger brother, Prince Joel, is terminally ill for an unknown reason. After the Queen became a monk, she did everything to maintain the security of the country. And because of this, she did not pay proper attention to the Prince, so they could often have conflicts. Then the Queen began to ignore him. And then, when the Queen found out that the Prince had fallen ill, it was too late. They asked every known doctor in the country for help, but no cause could be found. All they could do was wait for their brother to die. As these agonizing days passed, a letter arrived from His Majesty the Emperor. He said that licorice could help his brother's recovery. The Queen spoke of what she had heard, that Lacrimos had taken a precarious position of late, and many said that there had also been cases of the release of brutes who had been imprisoned for the rest of their lives, and the raising of the hands of foreigners persecuted within the empire. The girl didn't realize about whether it mattered that much. The queen started talking about putting aside past misunderstandings, and as a magnanimous and noble monarch, the crown prince should have known that losing a close family member is a huge grief. Claudia said that he was the only relative, and the girl didn't want to just give up. And the girl would do everything in her power to save him. And afterward, the queen began to ask if they could help her. What Rivera saw was that the Queen did look desperate. The girl wanted to help her, but not for profit, but because the girl really understands the Queen. Rivera began to ask the Crown Prince if he could use his power. The Crown Prince didn't hear anything and looked at the floor in thought. And afterward, he spoke of giving up and they would go back. Rivera could not believe it. The Prince started talking about how he wasn't worried about it. And if the girl thought he was worried, it meant that Rivera thought too well of him. 
The Crown Prince talked about how this was inter-imperial intrigue, and if he didn't let the tears flow, the Crown Prince would purposely create a conflict situation. But even if the Crown Prince helped them, they still wouldn't gain much. The strait that the Empire decided to give up in their favour is hard to maintain because there are a lot of pirates there. Rivera began to ask about the fact that they were only coming back because of this Lee. The Crown Prince did not understand what the girl meant. Rivera repeated and said about them, coming back only because the benefit would be small. The prince replied that it was easy for the girl to say and she didn't know anything. The girl agreed with the guy and started talking about how she really didn't know anything. But she still had something to say. Rivera did not realise that people should not do something not only for profit and if they just leave like that, the crown prince will get a lot of criticism in his address. Everyone would talk about how, given the opportunity, the crown prince ignored them. Rivera spoke of a man dying and the prince was the only one who could help. And if Rivera had that power, she would never turn her back on another. The crown prince began to talk about what the girl thought, this burdensome power, because he wanted it that way. Rivera didn't like it all and called him the most selfish and cold person. The girl was ashamed that she thought there was a shred of good-naturedness in the lad. The crown prince realized that he had become like that and he knew that nothing could be expected from a woman. A pisa walked up to Rivera and wanted to say something to her, but Rivera didn't say anything and talked about how she wouldn't give up. She said that she was already frustrated enough, but at the same time, the girl knew that it would not be easy. Rivera thought about pressing the crown prince's conscience. A pisa started talking about how she didn't know what the girl was talking about, but she would support her either way. Afterwards, the queen's servant, Chancellor Herman, came up to the girls and asked the girl why they were here for there was noise in the corridor, and he went out to see. But the boy thought that the girls were resting in the room. Chancellor began to ask Rivera if the girl was okay. Rivera replied that she was fine, and there was nothing wrong with her. Rivera spoke of looking at the castle, and to her, it was very beautiful. The girl could not tell that the prince was against it. The Chancellor thought about the girl's words and asked her how she felt about the fruit. The girl with a smile on her face began to talk about how the fruit was very sweet and delicious. The Chancellor offered the girl to see the castle in the morning. Rivera did not understand the guy's suggestion and decided to ask again. Herman replied that he is about fruit and there is a plantation behind the castle and while the girl will look at the castle, the guy will be interested in chatting with the girl. Rivera looked around the plantation. Her face was full of surprise. The girl said that it was the first time she had seen so many apple trees in the castle. One of the servants who were at the plantation began to look at the girl and then they gathered the apples and left. Rivera didn't understand why the servants were looking at her so obliquely. After a while, the Chancellor took the girl away from the servants and offered her an apple. Herman talked about how it was a difficult question to give an immediate answer to. Rivera told the boy that he was very frank and afterward asked him why he thought so. The girl realized that she should have watched what she said. The chancellor replied to the girl that she could see everything by her concerned face. Rivera then realized that it wasn't her tongue that was the problem, but her facial muscles. The girl said that she would really like to help Queen Claudia, but Rivera doesn't make a decision and the crown prince can't be persuaded. Rivera talked about how she will try to persuade him, but she can't promise anything. The Chancellor asked the girl if she really wants to help the Queen so naively. Rivera didn't understand what the Chancellor was saying or what he wanted to convey to her. Guy was wondering if the girl really wanted to help the Queen and if she wanted something else from the Crown Prince. Guy started asking about the benefit to Lacrima, the Crown Prince's decision, and how giving up and going home might benefit them all the most. Rivera didn't know what to say and afterwards she started to talk about how she wasn't that experienced in calculating benefits yet. But one thing she could say for sure was that she wanted to sacrifice someone's life, because what matters is that they have the chance to save the prince. And the girl thinks that the benefit is second most important. Thus, she will do her best to get the crown prince to help him. The chancellor stood and listened to the girl, and afterwards said that he wished to give Rivera some advice, though self-seeking. Herman began to tell the girl to be careful in this world.
because such unearned and naive desires can be used very easily. After a while, Rivera stood in her room and thought over the Chancellor's words. She was curious to know what the guy meant by telling her that. In this world, good intentions don't pay the same and one can only survive by using virtue for one's own ends. The world the girl is stuck in is such a place. Rivera talked about the lights being off and afterward asked if she was asleep. Rivera realised that her actions could actually lead to more consequences. She didn't know what to do. The girl was in the room with the crown prince. Rivera noticed that the guy was covered in sweat. She didn't know what she should do, call people or wake up the prince. The girl decided that she would have to take the guy's blanket off. As soon as Rivera stood up, the crown prince grabbed the girl by her clothes and took her hand. Rivera decided that she would stay with him for now. Rivera talked about how he was so peaceful when he slept. She wondered what he was dreaming about and if he was having nightmares. The crown prince talked about his mother in his dreams. His mother empress, strong mother, was beheaded after poisoning the former emperor. The girl wondered if he was dreaming about his mother. For some reason, when a girl looks at the crown prince, she begins to feel a sense of danger. Rivera wondered what the prince was so afraid of and who was scaring him so much that he was agonizing and moaning. The crown prince is suspicious of everyone around him, but Rivera wished he could trust someone. Even if the guy disagreed, the girl believed it, believed it was the right thing to do. Rivera wanted Parquet to see more and hear more, flowers, trees, ears, animals, and many people. So if Rivera kept repeating this to the boy, even if he was ever betrayed, the girl was talking about how she would be there for him. So she wanted the crown prince to have a good dream. The girl believed that someday her voice would reach this man as well. In the middle of the night, Rivera was already asleep, sitting on the couch. The crown prince came to the girl, took her in his arms, put her in the bed and considered the girl. He had no way of knowing what he himself wanted. The next morning, Rivera acted decisively. She talked about how she would have to try harder today, albeit in small steps. One of the servants approached the girl and asked Rivera if he could help the girl with anything. Rivera began to ask the guy if she could visit the prince. The servant took the girl aside and started talking about how he was fast asleep, so the girl was asked not to make any noise. Rivera looked at the guy and didn't understand why the room smelled terrible. The servant told the girl that they did not know the cause of the illness, so they could not even guess what he was ill with. At first they thought the prince was getting better, but the fever had not gone down for days, and his limbs were rotting. The servant had never seen people rotting alive before. It looked as if someone was eating away at his life force. Rivera asked how long he had been in that condition, and was told that the prince had been in that condition for a month. The servant replied that he could not last half a year in such a state. Having seen it with her own eyes, Rivera began to take it to heart. Rivera realized that the prince could really die without the tears of the crown prince. The girl decided to ask what kind of person the prince is. The servant answered that he is soft and worries a lot, but he is also the most good-natured person in the world. Prince Joel and the Queen have had a good relationship since childhood. Of course, the relationship then soured over the throne. The Queen supported a strict policy of limiting the power of the House of Lords to preserve the monarchy, and Prince Joel did not like the desire to make enemies of everyone. When the situation became heated, the prince fell ill. The queen regretted that she had acted so coldly, so she said that she would consider reviewing her policies. The aristocracy benefited from the situation, but no one could dare to say anything bad about them. Queen Claudia had a very sad face. Rivera was telling the crown prince about helping him, but the guy didn't want to do anything. The girl was telling the guy to imagine that the prince could pass away in such a difficult situation. The country could be plunged into an abyss of grief. Then the queen would hold a funeral for the prince and refrain from interacting with the outside world for a long time. And if Chryseus was banned for even a moment, the lacrim economy could suffer as well. And afterward, Rivera asked the crown prince if that was true. Rivera brought dessert into the room. It was a famous Chryseus product. Rivera told the guy about how this flavor would be remembered for a lifetime but the guy refused everything that was offered to him. Rivera talked about how no matter how hard the crown prince was, the fruit had to be tasted. The lad took a forkful of the fruit in his hands 
and afterward threw it away. The Crown Prince began to ask the girl about the fact that this was her way of trying to bribe him. After thinking for a bit, the Prince talked about how even if a hundred years passed, never, and no one would ever bribe the guy. Rivera got angry and told the guy about how she was pissing him off. She couldn't understand what kind of heir he would be if he threw the fruit on the floor and didn't even blink an eye. Rivera couldn't understand why a guy could be given such power. The girl said that if she had been given the power, she would have been or even times better at using it. Rivera realized that she couldn't give up. She wanted to at least make him taste the fruit. The servants stood back and laughed at the girl. They asked about her success in bribing the crown prince with fruit. Rivera looked at the servants and told them that she would definitely succeed this time. This time, the girl prepared a special dessert because even the crown prince can't go long without food. After a while, something fell on the floor from Rivera. The girl picked up what she had dropped and started talking about how she didn't even know she had it on her dress. It was an old chain. Rivera began to think about where and who she could give it to. Suddenly, the girl saw something from the food and decided to reach her hand for it. Suddenly, a servant came over and with her hand held that food item. She was talking about how his highness can't have it and the servants are using it for medicine for the prince. Rivera talked about how she was curious to know what it was and she started to ask to stay and go a little later. But the servant wouldn't let the girl do that. She talked about how everyone here would be busy soon and afterward told Rivera to go back. The door slammed shut and Rivera stood with Apisa and the girl had food in her hands. Apisa started talking to the girl about escorting the girl to the room. Rivera called Apisa over and started talking about how maybe she was being too sensitive, but the people in the castle were starting to act strange. The servants were whispering in the garden. The cook had a look on her face as if she were guarding against something. And the strangest thing was that they were doing it when Rivera was near the apples. The girl realized that she could get in trouble again and decided to Apisa to make the order. Rivera asked the girl to discreetly get one blue wig. In the room sat the crown prince. There were many thoughts in his head and they were all strange. The guy didn't understand why this was happening right now. Recently, Queen Claudia had been working on strengthening the monarchy. She had taxed the nobility to limit their power. However, the prince had fallen ill. Therefore, at the same moment when the strengthening of royal power was imminent, because of this, all of Claudia's plans collapsed misunderstandings with the nobility ceased. The timing coincided all too well. The Crown Prince sat and thought about the fact that this situation might involve more than just illness. In the study sat the Queen and Chancellor Herman. The Queen began to ask the Chancellor's opinion. She wondered if the Prince would be able to shed tears for them. Herman reassured the Queen and talked about how Miss Rivera was trying very hard. This made the Queen even more worried because Miss Rivera knows that Claudia has no way out. The Queen thought that the hardest thing was to get someone's favour, and Claudia didn't know if she could get it from the Crown Prince. The Chancellor smiled and kissed the girl's forehead. The Queen looked at Hermann and asked him about whether he remembered that there should be no personal relationships at work. The Chancellor was telling the girl that she needed it and now they can't fix the situation anymore. And now that they had drawn all the cards, there was nothing left for them to do but wait. The Queen realised that all that was left was to wait. It was the first time Claudia had ever been so powerless. Herman said that she was doing the right thing, for few people could fight it as vigorously as the Queen. The Chancellor did not want the girl to worry about it, and afterward told the girl to do as she saw fit, with Herman always protecting the Queen. The servants were walking through the castle. One of them began to complain about such a bad day, the second servant looked at the crate of apples and asked the first if Rivera had touched them. The first one started to say that enthusiasm is good, but she wanted Rivera to stop prying because she almost got her in trouble. The servant was curious to know what the Chancellor was thinking since he lets Rivera do whatever she wants. The servants were thinking about Herman just wanting to look good in front of the lacrimos. One never knows what this aristocracy is thinking. One of the servants pushed another so that all the apples flew around. The servant shouted and asked the other where she was looking. They could not understand how it happened. Apples are very expensive and they don't know what to do. 
The girls were afraid, but one of the servants told the other one to go and she would collect all the apples. The girl apologised and thanked the servant for forgiving her, and then she left. Apis was standing in the room. She was asking and telling the girl about what could be going to her. Rivera told Apis to investigate the orchard, because she needed to find out where those apples came from. Apis talked about how it's dangerous, and if they get caught, it won't be funny anymore. Rivera is doing this to change the Crown Prince's mind, for they can't just sit around and wait for something. Apisa talked about how Rivera's words didn't approve of her at all. The girl reassured Apisa and talked about how one of them won't be able to get caught and they will both get caught. From Apisa's investigation, it is unknown where these apples come from, so the apple tree is either hidden or moved to another location. These fruits were different from any she had seen here. Rivera wondered if these apples would give her a clue. The crown prince sat in his room and didn't know what to do, for there was nothing to do and no one else around. The prince didn't understand where Rivera had gone again, and he hoped the girl hadn't done anything wrong. Suddenly, the door opened and Rivera entered the room, who had changed into a maid's costume. The crown prince realised that she had brought apples again, and started telling the girl that they never listen to him and he doesn't need them. So the guy asked her to take them away. Rivera fell to the floor and started coughing. Her hands began to rot and her eyes were filled with fear. He couldn't believe it and realised that the prince was sick because of the apples. The crown prince shouted and called for Rivera, but it was too late. The girl had lost consciousness. After a while, Rivera found herself in some place. The girl did not realise what this place was and whether she was dead or not. Rivera realised that it didn't make sense after all. She had only matured to marriage and then died. The girl called out for someone to help her, but there was nothing. After a while, some woman stood behind Rivera and told her of the fact that she was able to reach her. Rivera turned her head and wanted to see the girl's face and find out who she was. The girl started talking about how she didn't want this to happen to Rivera and that it was fate and there was nothing she could do about it. Rivera was very cold for some reason. Rivera yelled to the girl and asked about where she was and if the girl had brought her here. Rivera wondered if the girl knew her. The girl started asking Rivera if she knew why she passed out. Rivera talked about how the apple had poison in it and she didn't know there was something that did that. The girl started talking about how it wasn't poison, it was evil directed at a person. That's what ruined the girl. Rivera didn't understand what this evil was. She wanted to know more about it. The girl stopped Rivera and told her about the only thing she can tell her right now and to be more specific, she doesn't want to tell her more to keep Rivera out of it. It's a very scary force. It's destroying Rivera and threatening lives, just like what's happening right now. The girl talked about how it's not too late and asked the girl to stop prying into the past because it's better not to know other people's secrets. The girl told Rivera that when she wakes up, she should keep quiet and then she can live a peaceful life. And afterwards, the girl asked Rivera if she would do that. Rivera started asking about what would happen if she didn't do it. The girl talked about how if the girl didn't do it, they would have to meet again. After a while, Rivera woke up. She was glad she wasn't dead and alive. The crown prince held the girl in his arms and was glad that she was awake. Rivera saw the prince and was frightened. She started screaming. The crown prince was holding his head and was angry at the girl. Rivera started talking about how the crown prince himself told her to keep her distance. That's why she was scared. After a while, Rivera started apologizing to the guy and telling him that she had sinned and the crown prince should execute her. The prince took the girl's hand and asked her what was wrong. Rivera fell as she came. The girl hurriedly told everything to the crown prince, then her eyes went dark. The girl realized that she was in trouble again. Rivera was scared because of the fact that the prince would scold her. The girl started to talk about that while she tried to change his highness's mind. Then the girl found out that in the prince's medicine, they add strange apples. Rivera realized that no matter how you looked at it, it looked suspicious. So the girl found one and ate it. The crown prince was about to get annoyed again because she did something stupid again. Rivera thought about it and decided on the idea that she should cry so the crown prince wouldn't swear at her. After a while, the crown prince listened to the girl's story and asked if that was all she wanted to tell him. He could not understand how Rivera was able to put unknown things in her mouth. 
The crown prince asked the girl if Rivera had a head on her shoulders. The prince talked about how, if it was really related to the prince's illness, it would be understandable that it would be dangerous. The prince couldn't understand how she was able to take a mindless bite of the apples, and if something went wrong, there would be trouble. Rivera began to ask the prince if he was worried about her. The crown prince was angry with the girl and talked about how terrible it was. Rivera replied that she wouldn't do it again. The girl watched the guy and saw that he was starting to calm down. The crown prince was telling the girl that he would have to meet the queen and ordered Rivera to sit in the room and wait for the doctor he would invite. Rivera told her to wait for the crown prince and began to talk about how this case was not so simple and they needed to tell Queen Claudia about the prince first. The crown prince replied to the girl about wanting to get even more involved. Rivera agreed with him and said that she did and then asked if the guy was going to stop her. But the crown prince said that he wasn't going to do anything like that and no one was going to be responsible for Rivera. And then the guy asked if she still wanted to do it. The girl started saying that she has already started and she should go till the end. Prince Joel was lying in bed and in his hands he held a medicine. He wanted to drink it and was practically bringing it to his mouth already. The crown prince stood behind the door and Rivera and told the girl about not being able to just walk in and having to keep order. Rivera replied that the prince was only sleeping all the time and she needed to talk to him. The girl opened the door and shouted the prince's name. A short time later, Rivera was already shouting that this medicine was not to be drunk. The queen stood beside the chancellor and carried on a conversation with him. Suddenly, a servant came running in and began to say that there was trouble and they should look at it. Claudia did not understand what was happening and then the servant shouted out that there had been a delegation of lacrimos in the prince's bedroom. Rivera was standing in the room with Prince Joel and was taking his medicine away from him. The prince began to ask the girl what she was doing here. Rivera replied that the symptoms were not due to an incurable disease, but the cause was due to the ingredient for the medicine. There was no way Joel could understand anything. All the servants gathered and began to ask the girl what she meant by it not being because of a terminal illness. Rivera started showing everyone her fingers and talking about how she had gotten the same symptoms after taking a bite of the apple that is part of the medicine. Prince Joel started asking the girl how she was able to figure it out. Rivera answered that she went into the castle kitchen on business and saw some strange apples there. Prince took the girl's hand and started talking about how it couldn't be. Joel talked about how Rivera just misunderstood. The girl didn't understand what the prince was talking about. Later, the queen came into the room asking about what happened from Her Majesty to Joel. She asked for a quick explanation. Prince Joel started yelling to the Queen about kicking out the Crown Prince and Rivera because they are ruining the Prince's condition and saying that it is not an incurable disease and the cause is something else. Joel yelled and talked about how he was already feeling bad. Rivera didn't understand what was going on. This Prince refused to accept the truth for some reason. The Prince shouted to the Queen about looking at Rivera's clothes for the girl is wearing the dress of their castle maid and she saw something strange while she was slacking off. The girl didn't know how to explain it and tell the queen. Rivera looked at the crown prince and asked for his help, but the guy didn't really want to help her. Rivera did not understand how she could convince the prince and what to say to him to make him believe. From behind her came the voice of Chancellor Hermann, who shouted to the girl that he had authorized her to do everything for the prince. Prince Joel couldn't believe what the chancellor said. Herman walked up to Rivera and started asking her what the problem was. The girl talked about how she thought the problem was with the medicine for the prince. She talked about how it wasn't really poison because the symptoms were mild. The queen was shocked and began to ask about the fact that it was the aristocracy. Prince Joel yelled to the queen and asked her why she couldn't believe him. The crown prince began to tell the prince that if he didn't believe so, it could be tested. The guy started asking Rivera about if she could swear right there that there was nothing in the medicine. And if there really wasn't anything in the medicine, the crown prince would shed tears of blessing. The chancellor, with a smile on his face, began to say that he would end this situation in this way and afterward asked Prince Joel how he would proceed. The prince looked at everyone in the hall and then decided to run away. The queen shouted after him and told him not to run away. 
Rivera realized that everything was going wrong and it wasn't supposed to be like this. The crown prince caught up with Joel and grabbed him by the scruff of the neck and then realized that the prince knew something. The queen began to ask Joel why he was so protective of the aristocracy. After all, the aristocracy is trying to kill Joel for profit because they are unequivocally sinners. Joel asks about the fact that the aristocrats didn't do it. The prince said that he did it himself, for the queen's sake. Little Joel was crying in the garden. After a while, little Claudia came up to him. She said the lad could not be left alone and told him to take the girl's hand and get up. Crybaby Joel and strong Claudia. No one doubted she would be queen. Joel was told by his parents that he would be the next Chryseus king. Claudia was upset and hurt by this. She didn't understand why Joel would be the next king and not her. From then on, things began to change between their relationship. Claudia couldn't believe that their father had chosen Joel. They couldn't understand what the reason for all this was. Joel started telling Claudia that he wasn't going to become king since he wasn't as good as the girl. Claudia got angry and told the guy that he was not capable of ruling the country at all, as Joel was weak and he wouldn't be able to lead the country. The girl talked about how her father had misjudged everything and he would have to change his mind when Claudia could show him her firmness. The girl said that from that moment on, she must try harder. After that, the queen began to work hard to change her father's decision, but her father did not recognize Claudia's coronation until the last. After her father's death, Joel gave the throne to his sister and she became queen. Everyone knew how talented Claudia was, so no one objected about this decision. All the people thought that the girl's talent would solve all the problems. The chancellor stood next to the girl and asked her what she meant by the attention of taxes from the aristocracy. Herman talked about how they only enjoyed the monarchy because of their trading activities, and if one objected to them, their own position would be shaken. The queen began to say that they would give up their status of neutrality and take part in the war. The Chancellor couldn't believe it and didn't understand what the Queen was saying. Claudia was talking about Chryseus having enough power to move on to the continent. What the Queen didn't understand was how much longer they would be subject to other countries. If one thought of the benefits they could gain from the war, they could once again become an unrivaled sea power. Prince Joel now understood why his father was reluctant to give the girl the reins. Claudia had told the girl not to make things up and the monarch of this country she was. She also told the prince that it was not his place to sputter. This belief was wrong. Joel realized that his sister was not someone to protect. She was someone who used others' power. The prince didn't realize what he should do or if the war would really start. The boy was scared. He was scared of the war. But what scared him the most was that he wouldn't be able to trust his sister anymore. Joel was sitting there talking about how he really couldn't do anything but roar. His nanny came over to the boy and started talking about how in the court where the king had passed away, no one could be trusted now, much less the queen. The queen was cruel. Prince Joel had a strange feeling. He wondered if the nanny was like that. She was a bit sullen in life, but she always talked about her sister's concern for the prince. Nanny started talking about how she didn't understand how a sister could use her own brother and then throw him away afterward. Joel didn't understand how Nanny dared to say that about his sister. The Nanny was telling the boy to accept reality. She talked about how the guy didn't see how the Queen changed after she handed the girl the power. Afterward, the Nanny showed the lad an apple. Joel began to ask what it was, for he had never seen apples like that. The Nanny began to tell the boy that if he ate this apple, his body would begin to rot and his energy would disappear. This is a special apple that will slowly kill the guy. Joel didn't understand what the girl was talking about and he dared to talk like that. The nanny continued the conversation and started talking about how the prince was really powerless and that the previous king's decision was wrong. The prince began to ask the nanny what she was going to and trying to tell him now. Nanny talked about how she was only trying to let Joel know. However, Her Majesty wanted her to and that you can't have wars if someone in the family is sick. A lot of people are looking for the aristocracy against it, so they might side with the guy. So if Prince Joel tries his best, he can stop the war, and maybe not even just the war. Nanny understood that the prince was interested in other things. 
The prince was wondering if Queen Claudia had really used the prince to gain power. Joel finished his story and began to talk about how this was his way of questioning the Queen's intentions. But when he saw her reaction, he felt more than just relief. Even when it was over, if it happened again, the guy didn't know if he could trust the Queen any further. Joel had the thought that maybe things were messed up because he was here. The Queen got angry and slapped the guy. She asked him how dare he say such a thing in front of her. The Queen talked to the guy about giving her a test and afterwards started saying it was for his sake. The Queen didn't understand why the boy didn't ask for his head to be cut off right away. Joel said that it was even better, because the girl didn't need such a useless brother. He talked about how since he went against the Queen, he talked about cutting off his head. The Queen got even more angry and slapped him once more. The Chancellor was yelling about how the Prince was still sick, and they should take pity on him. Rivera stood next to the Crown Prince and started to ask him about maybe they should leave and not get involved. But the Crown Prince said to stand a little longer and see it all. The Queen held the Prince and asked him about didn't he see how desperately the girl was trying to save him? Claudia told the Prince that she had never thought of him as an instrument. Crybaby Joel, the girl's only brother. Claudia did not believe they were related. Joel was weak and fearful. He was a naive and guileless child. Sometimes he was annoying, but still he was the only one she could trust in this cruel place. The Queen talked about how the father was definitely wrong. Jael asked about who is second to the king and who cares for the people more than anyone else and is so respected, and then said it was Claudia. He talked about how he wasn't interested in the title of king anyway, and his father should catch that someday too. Joel talked about how no one else could be king but the girl. The only one who would never betray a girl, her protection, was her brother. The Queen understood that her father didn't recognise her because he thought she wasn't as strong. So the girl thought she shouldn't look weaker than the guy because the Queen thought that was a way to protect the Prince. However, in fact, she was hurting the Prince by trying to protect him. The girl became Queen so easily because the Prince believed in her. But instead of faith, Claudia only gave Joel death. The Queen told the guy that the father was right and the girl didn't think she was fit to be a monarch. And afterward, the girl asked the Prince if he believed her. Joel cried and began to ask how he could, for his sister was the only Queen for him. The Chancellor approached Rivera and the Crown Prince and asked to leave the Queen and Joel alone. Herman told Rivera and the Crown Prince that he would escort them out. Rivera realised that if they didn't have a brother or sister, she was curious to see if they could make one that they could rely on. The atmosphere was strange. Somehow, the air felt a little heavy all of a sudden. The Chancellor came very close to the girl's ear and started talking about how he should thank Rivera for letting him use her. The Crown Prince hugged the girl and talked about how he had been suspicious from the beginning. Afterward, he decided to ask if the Chancellor was hiding something. Herriman, with a smile on his face, said that he wasn't trying to hide anything and now he explained everything from the beginning and told the Crown Prince and Rivera not to stress so much. The Chancellor offered to move on to another place. Rivera started to ask Herman if he knew that from the beginning the Prince didn't have an incurable disease. The girl did not understand why the Chancellor did not tell this and whether Herman was really a criminal. Herman answered that he was not such a dangerous character but the girl didn't quite believe it. The Chancellor talked about how the reason was hard to explain and it wasn't an assassination attempt or anything like that. It doesn't seem so. But the Prince is the greatest danger to the Queen and isn't this incident a planned treason anyway? In truth, the timing of the Prince's illness was too fortunate. He investigated the case because he thought he might have teamed up with the nobles. The Chancellor was talking about the Prince doing it on his own and the aristocracy didn't have to do anything about it. The Chancellor began to ask the Crown Prince if he did not know this, how difficult it was to maintain such a relationship while fighting for power. Herman replied that, as the future consort of the Queen, he would no longer express personal opinions. Rivera sat on the couch and began to ask the Crown Prince if they could move on. But for some reason, the Crown Prince told the girl no. He talked about how someone like Rivera couldn't suddenly feel compassion and the fact that they had saved the prince. It was clearly the girl's doing. The crown prince didn't understand if it could have been because of the lacrima. The chancellor talked about 
how if they suddenly got tears, they would immediately be influenced by the Lacrema's powers. It was the best way to avoid political interference, to get help from the delegation, but not to trust them with any final action. The Chancellor was telling the girl that he had warned that naive souls were easily used to their advantage. The Crown Prince listened to this and talked about what a baloney it was, and afterward began to ask the Chancellor about what he thought he was getting away with. The Chancellor replied that he certainly did not think, or hope so. Herman answered them that they would pay him everything for his good faith. Afterward, Herman put some patterned paper on the table. The Chancellor began to ask Rivera and the Crown Prince if they knew what it was. The girl looked at it and didn't realise what it looked like. Meanwhile, the Crown Prince rose quickly from the couch and with frightened eyes began to prod the lad as to where he got it from. The Chancellor replied that it was found in the belongings of the Nauna who had given the apple to the Prince. Herman replied about how the problem was that the nanny was denying everything and saying that she didn't remember anything. Rivera began to ask Herman what the drawing was. The Chancellor replied that it was hard to find a drawing like that right now. Relpica is the crest of a clan trying to revive ancient magic and said that once upon a time it was a rather prosperous clan run by scholars. It's gone now and the legends about it are nothing more than a fairy tale. Their faith was very different from the present one. The original belief was that they thanked the spirits for their power, making it clear that it did not belong to humans but they believed that it was up to the humans, not the spirits, to take control of these powers. Rivera began to ask the Chancellor about whether these people had started the war. Herman agreed with the girl's words, and then said that this was the reason why they had disappeared. Herman said that since they had found the thing, it might mean that they were acting again. The boy replied that Lacrima is a country that builds legitimacy through the protection it receives from the spirits. And so their appearance might greatly jeopardise their position and afterwards said that he knew something. The Chancellor began to say that if they learned of any actions of this clan, they would then pass the information on to the Lacrima. It would be their friendship. The guy thought that this offer would be more attractive than handing over the straight. The Crown Prince and Rivera were standing outside. The guy started to tell the girl about how she was buzzing his ears about the sights. The Crown Prince said they were finally an out, and afterward asked the girl why she had that look on her face. The guy wondered if fools get washes. Rivera looked at the Crown Prince and started talking about how she had a lot of thoughts in her head. The Crown Prince had talked about the Prince promising not to be sick, but the girl didn't realise that wouldn't be the case this time. Rivera thought about all sorts of things, and including what she could do in such a situation because even if the truth is revealed and the prince is saved, there's still nothing the girl can do about the conspiracy behind it. Because of this, she was suddenly reminded of her father's words that she, as a simple noble lady, could do something. The crown prince began to tell the girl that it was too selfish to talk about it now. Rivera didn't understand what the problem was or if she wasn't human. There were many people behind Rivera's back, including a pisa. The Crown Prince began to ask them to disperse and go for a walk, including the chaperone. Rivera started asking the guy what was going on, to which the Crown Prince replied to Rivera that they needed to talk. It was awkward for the girl to stand alone and talk about something. After a few seconds, the girl started asking the Prince what he wanted to talk about. Meanwhile, the Crown Prince began to slowly undress. He was shooting his shirt and looking down at the floor. When Rivera saw this, she started asking him if he was crazy and what he was doing. Meanwhile, the Crown Prince started telling the girl not to make such a fuss and to give him her hand. Rivera didn't understand what she should do and thought that the Crown Prince had really lost his mind. The girl decided not to refuse and gave her hand, even though she still didn't like it. The girl thought it was stupid and closed her eyes. And after she opened them, she saw the hand that was resting on the Crown Prince's chest. The place where the hand was lying on was glowing. The Crown Prince answered about it appearing after the previous Emperor passed away. And when the Crown Prince uses the power, it appears. The guy talked about not crying because he doesn't know the Emperor's intentions as the Crown Prince assumes it has something to do with him. However, the one who gave the clue that the Crown Prince was chasing was an ordinary lady named Rivera. 
The crown prince was responding to the girl about how he had used the girl, and because of that, Prince Joel's life was saved. In that room, the Chancellor told Rivera not to forget about the incident and said that before acting, one should realise the situation and not follow feelings. Then the kind and naive soul of the girl would become the strongest weapon that no one else would be able to use. In this drawing may lie the truth about the death of the Crown Prince's father. So the lad wants to find out. He must find out, for the sake of his mother's good name. The Crown Prince began to ask the girl if it is annoying to be just a noble lady, and if the girl wants to reveal her purpose without fear of others. The Crown Prince asked for support in this situation. The guy asked the girl to become Empress, and afterward, the Crown Prince extended his hand and asked the girl if she could do it. Rivera wanted to become Empress, but she also remembered Tatio's words and realised that he needed tears. The girl didn't have time to say anything as Apisa began to approach them. The Crown Prince told them that they had talked and began to ask them if anything had happened. Apisa talked about the necklace that came in for Rivera. It was very well repaired. Apisa said it could even be tested. Rivera thanked the girl. It was the talisman that Tatio had given the girl. This necklace gave Rivera a big clue and Tatio helps the girl even from a distance. One of the servants talked about how it was very romantic because thanks to the amber that worries for the safety of the beloved, they found out the truth. The servant asked Rivera who gave it to her and if it was the crown prince. The servant shouted that they were destined to be together. The crown prince and Rivera looked at each other and didn't understand what it could mean. Tatio sat in the garden drinking tea. There was silence everywhere. The guy was talking about being so quiet, and because of that it was suspicious. It was always like that in the castle. Tatio's head began to fill with unexpected thoughts. He thought about Rivera and talked about how she didn't know anything. Suddenly, someone started calling out for a guy. Standing across from Tatio was Rivera. Tatio started to tell the girl that they had just arrived, but Rivera interrupted him and said that it didn't matter and that they were in trouble. Tatio started telling the girl to calm down, and afterwards he asked her what trouble she was in. Rivera took out the necklace and said that she was in trouble because of it, for the crown prince saw it and said that they would marry immediately before returning to Lacrima. The crown prince started asking the girl if she knew who gave it to her. Rivera began to tell the prince that she had said this before, and she didn't even remember the face of the person who gave it to her. The crown prince began to ask the girl about the fact that she was wearing something around her neck that was handed to her by a man whose face she didn't even remember. Rivera agreed with the guy and talked about how it was the man who was concerned that she was hurt and she didn't know what she was supposed to do in that situation, not throw it away. Rivera said that she couldn't throw away something that was given to her with such intentions. The crown prince looked at the girl and talked about how the fact that she was so angry looked very suspicious. He talked about how there was no way to check it now. There was no way Rivera could tell that Tatio had given her the necklace. The Crown Prince didn't know that there could have been such a problem. Rivera asked the guy not to be sarcastic. The Crown Prince decided that it was already safe to start making the official announcement. Rivera didn't understand what this was about. The Crown Prince looked at the girl and talked about the announcement he would be making about their wedding. If the announcement is made officially, then this will not happen again. Rivera didn't understand what was going on and started asking the guy if he really wanted to marry her. The Crown Prince asked the girl, then she listened to him and if she listened at all. Afterward, he started asking the girl what she was not satisfied with. Rivera finished his story to Tatio and said that he told everything and immediately went to the Duke. Tatio asked the girl what the problem was and what Rivera was going to do, because if the girl agreed, it would be harder to delay the wedding, and then asked Rivera if she had changed her mind. The girl was screaming and talking about how she didn't understand how to live with such a person together. Tatio was telling the girl that it was very good that she was determined. Rivera realised that there was nothing she could do about it. And it was even better if the girl would be closer to get the prince's tears, because if the girl became his wife, before the possibilities would be surprisingly more. But not only that, Rivera herself wanted to know about why the prince never cries. After all, everything has its reasons. Tatio looked at the girl 
and afterwards said about how she was glad that everything has its own motives. However, he asked about whether the girl threw away the necklace he gave her. The crown prince was riding unhorsed and decided to stop. He saw something. All the servants began to ask the prince what was wrong, to which the crown prince replied that the archduke was going mad. The archduke stood in his study and looked out the window. Afterward, one of his servants came to him and told him that the crown prince had come to see him. Since the last time they had seen each other, the archduke looked paler. The archduke began to tell the crown prince that he was sorry he couldn't greet the fellow in good health. The archduke began to say that he had heard that the crown prince had come from Chryseus and offered to dine the lad. But the prince said that they would have to discuss business first. The crown prince replied that he had seen the labourers in the Vidarden. The archduke began to talk about them tilling the land. The prince wondered if that was why the archduke's face had turned so grey. The archduke didn't say anything and just kept quiet. The archduke started talking about something he wanted to ask the guy boldly. The man began to ask about his daughter. He was wondering how his daughter was, if she was all right. The crown prince began to talk about the archduke's hurried behaviour and asked the man to sit down. The archduke apologised and told the crown prince that he was rude. The crown prince began to say that in that case he would also ask something in advance and told the girl about how they had better not go out of their way to answer. The crown prince talked about how Emperor Retan is very perceptive, so he gets rid of any danger nearby. An example of this is that he never lets soldiers of other aristocrats in. The crown prince was curious about the aphis of chivalry and whether the archduke owned it. The crown prince doubted it at first, but after seeing the archduke's possessions today, he was convinced that he did. Guy had told Archduke Jerome Dux Duarte that he wouldn't ask twice and decided to find out what the Archduke had talked to the Emperor about. The Emperor was sitting in his room, talking about the fact that he was currently planning a major overhaul of the Empire's waterways, but said something about the Archduke not knowing it. The temple does not give the Emperor rights to the unfreezing river. The Emperor asks the Archduke if he has a place where the unfreezing river runs. It was created from the tears of the first Emperor and never freezes, no matter how cold the winter is a place similar to a shrine for the temple, proving that the Lacrim Empire is protected by the spirits. However, the Retan Emperor cannot use the tears of blessing, so the temple forbids him to go near the river. The Archduke understood that this Emperor was asking to be allowed to go to the river immediately, and he was demanding that the Ducal House oppose the temple. The Crown Prince sat on the couch and asked the Archduke what they were accomplishing with all this. The Archduke began to tell the lad that he had only one answer to this question. It was peace and safety for the Lacrimos. Right now, there's only one night, but when Rivera officially becomes the Crown Prince's wife, she'll be able to gather all her knights in the Imperial Palace. Not like the Archduke, but at least he will be able to provide security. The Crown Prince began to ask the Archduke if he really thought this would provide protection for his daughter. The Archduke was angry, yelling and talking about how it was because of the Crown Prince that everything originally happened. The Archduke was saying that if the Crown Prince could only prove his ability to advance to the throne, there would be no need to gather the women of the entire country for a viewing. The Archduke was saying to the Crown Prince that if the Prince had just let Rivera go, the Emperor would not have interfered. The Crown Prince thought it was useless. Archduke Duarte is known as a strategist because of his unique and shrewd mind and his determination to suffer any losses to win the battle, regardless of how weighty those losses were. However, it seemed to the Crown Prince that it didn't work on his men. The Emperor sent the Crown Prince abroad and used his power over the Archduke to create a rift between the temple, which supports the Prince and the Ducal family. What the Crown Prince got out of the power unjustified. The Archduke stood up and began to ask the kid why he chose Rivera and what caught his eye about this kid. The Crown Prince looked away and began to think about the Archduke's question. Two coloured eyes that looked at the Crown Prince with amazement, hands prodding the bird as if it had to get free faster. The reason the Crown Prince held on to someone he was seeing for the first time in his life was because he knew that if he didn't hold on to it now, he would never see that face again. The Crown Prince realised his mistake. Rivera had provoked him. The Crown Prince realised that it was too late for regrets. 
the boy realised that if the emperor heard about it, he would definitely use it. The crown prince realised that he needed to keep doing what he had planned. He needed Rivera to get tired and give up. That was the plan. But at some point, the guy realised that things weren't going as planned. And now it seemed foolish to change the decision. The Archduke was still waiting for an answer from the Crown Prince. The boy came out of his thoughts and spoke about Rivera being stupid, naive, not knowing anything about the world, doing and then only thinking. The Archduke didn't realise whether it was praise or an insult. The Crown Prince began to say that the girl is very kind and her kindness is very profitable for the Prince and keeping Rivera around is also very profitable. The Crown Prince spoke of the fact that if he had to marry, he would marry someone who was easier to manage. And besides, the engagement was soon to be announced. The Archduke said that this was what was expected of His Majesty, and Rivera was not at all sorry for the Crown Prince. The Crown Prince replied to the Archduke that he too was not free to do as he wished and could not yield. The Crown Prince sat for a while and afterwards sat down and told the Archduke that since they were done talking, he would go. The Archduke stood back and afterward asked the guy about whether she thought the Archduke would lose again. The Crown Prince started telling the man about how he makes him say amazing things. And afterward, the Prince asked the Archduke if Rivera seemed so weak that she couldn't take something like that. The Crown Prince did not like talking to the Archduke and replied that he was no longer going to talk to him idly. The Archduke was in despair. He told himself that he had done all he could. Meanwhile, Tatio and Rivera were in the garden. Tatio began to ask the girl what she ended up doing with the necklace and if the girl wanted it back. Rivera started to talk about how this necklace had helped her and she didn't want to do that, but she also said that she couldn't keep it with her anymore. Tatio looked down at the floor and listened to the girl intently. Rivera was yelling to the guy about how sorry she was and she didn't know that it could have come out like that. Rivera replied about how she had actually wanted to buy souvenirs at Chrysias, but she hadn't had a good minute. So Rivera was responding to Tatio about how if the prince needed something, the girl could look for it for the guy. Tatio asked the girl if they would look for it together, to which Rivera started telling Tatio that he misunderstood. And it's not that the girl wants it. The prince didn't even hesitate to start saying that he liked the idea and wanted to go with the girl together. Rivera couldn't think that he would like it so much. Takio changed his clothes and did his ghost makeup, and afterwards he went up to Rivera and asked how the girl was. Rivera really liked the guy's outfit, and he really looked like a ghost. Outside everyone was having fun and dancing. Rivera thought about why the guy would do ghost makeup. Tatio started talking about what he thought Rivera had forgotten while she was abroad. It's a national holiday in two weeks. At this time, everyone in the capital city is doing ghost makeup so a bunch of people can be found on streets like this. One of the girls came up to Rivera and talked about how the girl has eyes like a ghost. Takio talked about how it is, and at a time like this, Rivera's eyes don't attract attention. Rivera talked about how that's really true. Rivera talked about Tatio getting a lot of attention. The girl began to ask the prince if it was okay for Tatio to walk around town like that in full masquerade. Tatio replied that this country already has a prince, and he is the hereditary prince. No one is interested in a prince without inheritance rights, and the commoners don't know Tatio's face. The prince talked about how he was no different from the common people. So Tatio started asking Rivera if she could call him by his first name. Rivera wanted to say something, but couldn't, because the guy objected and talked about how he would love that. Afterward, Tatio asked if she wanted it. Rivera looked at Tatio and said something about him that she knows how to use her face. Rivera couldn't tell if the guy was fooling around or not, but it made the girl feel like she was going back in time. Rivera asked what Takio had, what he wanted. The prince talked about how it wasn't anything that special, but at the same time, he had something he wanted to do. Rivera was all ears. Tatio started asking about how about a girl giving her time to a guy for the day to day. After a while, the girl couldn't say anything and only saw Takio take her hands and call her to dance. After the dance, Tatio said that he had fun and had not had so much fun in a long time. Rivera was glad he was having so much fun. The girl felt like she was playing with her little brother. Tatio talked about how she was sad to go back, but he couldn't leave his duties for long. And afterwards, he suggested the girl to go along with him. 
Rivera didn't realize where they were going and just followed the guy. There was a song coming from somewhere. The girl went to the window and saw someone. After a while, the girl ran to some girl and started asking her for something. The girl gave Rivera a trunk and after that, Rivera came to Tatio and started talking about how she knew this song because she often sang it to her before bedtime. Rivera began to tell Tatio that she would be sorry if he never took anything because these boxes were cheap. Tatio had something to say to the girl and then he took her hands and covered her hands with his. He started talking about how Prince Rank can't be trusted because he's a much crueler man than Rivera could ever imagine because as soon as the girl shows even a little affection, she might get hurt. Rivera started asking about Tatio helping the girl only because of his majesty, because the girl said the guy would tell about the emperor. The girl asked Tatio if she can tell right now about it. Tatio told the girl about how he changed his mind and decided that it would be right for him to keep Rivera out of it even more. Tatio told the girl to only concentrate on getting tears of blessing and if anything happens to Rivera, he will help the girl and after Tatio thanked the girl for the gift. Rivera talked about how the prince said the same thing as the woman she saw. Rivera talked about how she has spent her life doing only what she is told to do. Rivera is only here because she doesn't want to live anymore. Rivera didn't realize if it had anything to do with what was taken out of the book. The girl apologized and talked about how she couldn't just stand by and if she found out what happened between them, it wouldn't be good. The girl was curious to know why Takio would tear the crown prince's blessing. Rivera had to know that, and she knew she had to do something. Tatio was pacing the room and talking about how he hadn't planned this in any way. The guy was holding the chest that Rivera had given him. One of the emperor's aides started telling Tatio that he thought the guy would throw it away. The aide that the guy was unexpectedly calm and whether he felt pity for the girl. Or maybe Tatio might have really liked his brother's woman. Tatio spoke of how he could not forgive such jokes, even to one who was close to the emperor, and afterward told him to behave appropriately. This assistant's name was Priestess Orb. The priestess talked about how she felt that she herself, without noticing it, had kicked the guy in the sore, and afterwards asked for forgiveness. Tatio began to ask what the assistant needed, and he would accomplish everything without any problems. The priestess realized that the guy could do anything the girl told him to do. However, the catch was that Tatio would not be able to solve this problem. Orb talked about his majesty telling Tatio to help Lady Rivera and not to get attached to her. The boy knew it because the emperor was afraid that rumors might start about his relationship with Rivera because they'd gone for a walk once. The priestess told the boy to be careful with this and it could backfire on them. The girl said that feelings are a way to get things done, so the priestess told her to keep her distance from Lady Rivera. The human desire for revenge can ruin everything. Takio started talking about how he knows his place and knows what he should do. The boy talked about how the emperor doesn't care about what he's been through. When his own son is crying, his men would definitely not act like that. When Tatio asked for another investigation to be done, the guy wouldn't be able to take the crown prince's side so easily. The priestess said that was definitely the case. So because of the story about a relative dying at the hands of the crown prince when the guy was around, even the people present then turned their backs on Takio. The priestess talked about how she just had pure curiosity. The priestess talked about how she thought the prince wanted to win Lady Rivera over to his side with this story, and afterwards the girl asked why Takio didn't dare. The guy talked about how the girl knew a lot. Tatio said that she felt sorry for her because the guy wanted her to trust him completely. And after for a second, Tatio started to think. And after hearing the story, she will try to understand the crown prince. After a while, Takio started talking about him and priestess to end it there. Afterward, the guy left and told the girl that he didn't want to talk to the girl anymore. Priestess started asking Tatio if the guy would need her help. Tatio stopped and asked the girl if the priestess knew who she trusted the least. Tatio doesn't trust anyone who believes in magic. He trusts less those who expect the impossible and wallow in the unreal, but still think they will be saved. So such idiots Takio can't trust. The priestess thanked the guy for the offer and said her refusal. If it can go on like this, the girl will not stay away. A pisa sat up and called out to Rivera. The girl was lying on the bed thinking about something. 
Apisa started to ask what was going on with the mistress. The girl jumped up from the bed and talked about how she had dug through everything and found nothing. Rivera complained and talked about how there was nothing that caught her attention. Apisa began to talk about how she didn't think the Crown Prince could have recorded absolutely everything that happened here. Rivera began to ask Apisa if she didn't recall anything, even a little. Apisa started talking about looking under a different face. Rivera couldn't quite figure out what angle. Apisa started talking about what she wanted to say, that the Crown Prince didn't write it down because there was nothing to write about. Rivera thought about the Crown Prince's assassination attempt. Not only had the family that had committed treason been destroyed, but as it turned out, all the records of it had been destroyed. Rivera learned that Count Arias' family had tried to kill the Crown Prince, but the Count had been executed on the spot. There were even some rumours regarding its authenticity. Apis wanted to add something and said something about the Crown Prince just returning to the castle and he should be coming to Rivera soon, so Apis said to prepare for his arrival. The girl was very much startled and shouted about why she wasn't told right away. The Crown Prince was standing outside waiting for the girls. Rivera immediately ran outside and was telling Apisa that you can't keep people waiting because she wasn't even warned. The Crown Prince asked the girl why she was sweating so much and rushed here to him. The reason for that was that the girl had to return all the books. Rivera was telling the guy that she had arrived so quickly because the Crown Prince had arrived. Surprisingly, upon hearing this, the guy wasn't angry. Rivera started asking the Crown Prince how everything went and if everything was okay, she asked how the father and how the Crown Prince met with him. Did he approve of the marriage? The Crown Prince talked about there being too many people here. The Crown Prince took Rivera by the waist and carried her away, saying that he would tell her more about everything elsewhere, namely in his room. Rivera didn't understand what the guy was doing and whether he had completely lost his mind. The girl was embarrassed, begging to be let go and talking about how everyone was looking at them. Rivera yelled, saying she could walk on her own. After a while, the Crown Prince got the girl to her feet. As soon as the guy let the girl go, she started asking what he was doing. The Crown Prince replied that they needed to pretend like they were in love. Rivera didn't understand why and asked the guy about not having an arranged marriage. The girl talked about not necessarily driving her to a white heat for everyone to see. The Crown Prince was telling Rivera that it was only at times like this that she could think soberly. And this was just what the Crown Prince needed. The guy was answering about the Emperor playing the Archduke first. Rivera was all ears. The temple is the strongest of the Emperor's cronies. It has the power of spirits. In other words, it is considered the most annoying obstacle. For the Rhetan Emperor, who does not possess the power of spirits, this was acceptable. The Crown Prince's response was that while they were in Chryseus, the Emperor pressured the temple with the help of the Archduke. He made it so that even if Rivera and the Crown Prince were to marry, the Crown Prince would not be able to use the Archduke's power. After this, it is obvious that the relationship between the Grand Duke and the Temple will change. Rivera thought that it was impossible, for His Majesty the Emperor had forgiven the girl's sin. The Crown Prince replied that the girl was the daughter of the Archduke, who had been given power, so the Emperor could not get behind the girl so easily. Perhaps on the day the Archduke visited the palace, the Emperor made a deal with him, pledging the girl's safety. Rivera talked about how it couldn't have happened, because the girl didn't make an agreement to bring the tears of blessing. The reason why the girl touched the offering was not only because of marriage, but also because Rivera no longer wanted to obey the aristocracy. If the Duke is involved, it's going to be bad. Rivera couldn't believe it. She talked about how her crime was her own fault, and it was only fair that she was kicked out of the Duke's order. Rivera talked about how she was only here because she was responsible for all of this meaning the girl meant that she didn't touch the offering not to get out of it with the help of her family. The Crown Prince realised that the girl still didn't understand anything. She didn't know what she would get if she went this far. Rivera didn't need power or fame or position. The Crown Prince didn't think it was just a bona fide move. The boy had only one question in his mind. He didn't understand why. The Crown Prince didn't see something. 
something where the girl's gaze went. The crown prince slowly began to approach the girl and afterwards gently took her hand and looked at her lips. Rivera didn't understand what the prince wanted to do and called out to him. Like an enchanted man, the crown prince woke up and quickly removed his hand. The guy started talking about how it all happened by accident. The guy was shocked that he had touched the girl. He talked about himself not being predictable and not knowing what to expect from himself. Rivera asked the prince about what he was going to do. Since it was an act of love without prior consent, and what that had to do with what she had just said. The crown prince began to tell the girl that as she may have heard, it was all about the temple. In this situation, if a guy wants to get engaged to a girl, chances are the temple will be against it. River started to ask the guy if it was to her advantage. All the crown prince said was that the current situation would help solve River's problem. The crown prince was going to spread a rumor around the world that he had really fallen in love with the girl and they were engaged because River's decision was the decision of the temple. In addition, the Crown Prince added that on the national day, the girl would be able to personally announce her engagement. Even if the Archduke made such a choice, Rivera will still create an image of being recognized by the spirits. Then it will be difficult to kick the girl out of the temple, but it will be easy to create the impression that Rivera does not want to become a Duchess. Rivera talked about how no one would be able to believe it the crown prince told the girl not to worry about it, and if it had to do with spirits, the guy would figure something out. Rivera listened to the crown prince and told him about the fact that that wasn't what she was going on about. The girl was talking about how no one would be able to believe that the crown prince really loved a girl like her. The crown prince began to ask the girl if she had any other ideas, but Rivera replied about how lies wouldn't last long and what they would do if someone found out. The Crown Prince replied that people believe what they are shown and it's not called lying, it's called moral obligation. Rivera wanted to say something but didn't have time to do anything. The girl was interrupted by a servant. The Crown Prince began to ask her what had happened and what she wanted from them. The servant said that the Oberka merger had come. Without having time to say anything, the boy entered the room. He immediately said hello to Rivera and to the Crown Prince. The servant began to say that His Majesty the Emperor had arrived. The Crown Prince began to tell the Emperor that he was in the wrong order. And first, the Emperor had to announce all to the Crown Prince what he wanted and what he was looking for. The Emperor replied to the guy that he was coming. Rivera started telling the guy about. The Emperor said he would do his best. After hearing the information about the Archduke, Rivera realized what she had to do. This story would not end so easily, even if the girl got tears of blessing. Rivera realized that she needed to see the emperor and to do so, she would do everything she could until she regretted it. Little Rivera looked at her daddy and asked her why they didn't have a mum. The girl's father answered her about why the princess was asking such questions again and if the girl didn't have enough of a daddy. Rivera talked about how she only needed a daddy, but the girl thought that her daddy thought differently. When daddy is alone, he is always looking somewhere far away so the girl thought that daddy was not enough just for Rivera. The girl's father stood next to her and asked her if she remembered her mum's face. Rivera answered about how she didn't know because it was a long time ago. The father smiled and talked about how the girl had a mum and she was a great person. She saw things that others couldn't see. Also, she was smart, so she always thought two steps ahead. Dad talked about how naturally mum wasn't with them now because dad couldn't keep up with her anymore. But dad also talked about how he was still happy because Rivera was there with mom's eyes. Rivera cheered and talked about how she was more like her mom than her dad. So she would never leave her dad because a girl cares more about what she has now than what will be later. Her father smiled and talked about her daddy's promise too, that he would never leave Rivera alone. Suddenly the girl awakened from her thoughts and listened to the emperor. The emperor called Rivera into the room Apisa wanted to go with the girl too, but she was blocked in her way. Rivera began to ask what it was, but the Emperor answered everyone that only Lady Rivera should go with him and she had the right to enter the audience room. Rivera was very nervous and talked about her hands sweating. The girl tried to remain confident, but having seen the Emperor live, the atmosphere around him is far from joking. The girl entered and said that Rivera Ventus Duarte of the Duarte family had come to visit the Emperor. 
The emperor began to tell the girl that she was the one the prince had fallen in love with at first sight. The man said that he was pleased to meet the girl and told Rivera not to be nervous and to look up. Rivera noted the fact that he seemed friendlier than he looked. However, that didn't make it any easier. The reason was that the girl had sins behind her. Rivera began to ask the emperor why he had summoned her and for what purpose. The emperor replied that he found out that the crown prince and the girl had decided to arrange an engagement and in such a way that even the archduke couldn't stop the crown prince. The emperor wondered if Rivera had changed her choice and the girl had decided not to try to reach her tears and get married. Rivera said that this was not at all true and the present situation was not in the girl's favour. So the girl had nothing to do but to agree to the engagement and she would be sure to get tears of blessing. The emperor started asking the girl why she was doing this. Rivera didn't understand what the emperor was talking about, so she decided to ask again. The emperor didn't quite understand the fact that even though the girl had such a chance in Chryseis, she couldn't get the tears. Rivera started talking about how she didn't agree because she didn't want to get the guy's tears. The emperor started talking about how it was clear to him and told the girl that she didn't understand and wouldn't understand anything. The emperor replied that it was enough to get the prince's tears by persuading him without turning the whole country upside down. But Rivera decided not to do that and found another way. The emperor thought that the girl wanted to avoid marriage by all means so she could get anything belonging to the prince. The emperor couldn't understand what the girl was trying to accomplish since she had chosen such a path. Rivera thought about her words and began to say that she too would ask something. She was curious about what his majesty, having got the tears by any methods and instruments, was going to do with them. The girl thought about his majesty trying to get the tears to continue the life of the imperial family. But as soon as the girl learned that the archduke was involved, Rivera realised that she had not guessed the true intent of the idea at all. Rivera asked the emperor why he wanted the prince's tears. The emperor laughed and said that he really didn't understand anything and Rivera could crawl on the floor and enjoy life, but some girl dares to address the emperor like that. The boy began to ask the girl if she thought the emperor was unworthy to bear the title. Rivera answered that she had never once thought so in her life. The girl was very worried and could not say anything. The emperor laughed at the girl and asked her what she could do, because if there was a problem with the emperor, she would take care of it. Rivera remembered the words of a girl she met in space. She had told Rivera that when the girl wakes up, she should live and keep a low profile. Things like secrets. Rivera realised that she would end up regretting it if she would live her life pretending to be deaf and blind. The Emperor chuckled and said something about how he really didn't understand the Crown Prince's taste in women. The Emperor looked at the girl and then decided to tell her what he was unhappy about. Rivera interrupted the Emperor and told him that she still hadn't heard the true intentions of the guy. The priestess came up behind the girl and touched Rivera's shoulder with the words that she wanted to meet the girl. As soon as the priestess looked at Rivera's face, she immediately spoke of the fact that the girl had gotten her mother's eyes. The crown prince stood with Rivera and spoke of something she should learn. In the emperor's entourage, the girl should be careful of the orb bishop. Led if the current emperor is a god messenger with power, then the bishop is the one who gives the emperor that power. Everyone was talking about how if a person without abilities ascended to the throne, the tears of blessing would cease to exist. The imperial court is now so healthy that it's starting to talk nonsense. Can the people who are trying to oppose the girl be considered allies of the executed empress? As long as the crown prince's abilities are unstable, there is no one. Who could protect the throne but the Archduke of Latel? who had a blood relation to the imperial family. The priestess spoke to Rivera about swearing that in your positions, you will do everything for the sake of stability in La Crima. Swear that you will work for the good of the empire, in the name of the new emperor. Orb is the de facto ruler and confidant of Emperor Riton. The girl had no way of understanding why this man was saying something about Rivera's mom. The priestess realized that everyone seemed to be very much surprised. All the time, Rivera lived thinking that the girl's mother was dead. Rivera didn't understand what anyone was talking about. The man stood and talked about how he knew where the girl's mother was now. There was no way Rivera could believe it. 
The emperor sat behind him on the throne and talked about how the man was not pretending. The emperor was talking about how he would make sure that Rivera could get rid of the ducal family quickly, if only she could bring him to tears. But at the same time, if it didn't work out, Rivera's relatives wouldn't be able to live peacefully anymore. The girl understood what the crown prince was warning about. For the sake of his goal, this man is not willing to commit any sin. Rivera understood that this is the price for the attempt on His Majesty's life. Rivera was curious about what it meant to eliminate everyone involved for doing things. The Emperor talked about how he didn't plan to get to that point, because the Emperor was thinking of using Rivera and then throwing him out, but he didn't know what he could do. The Bishop said that no one but the young lady could get hold of the Crown Prince's tears. The girl did not understand how the Bishop could be sure of this, the bishop began to talk about how all of this happened because the girl got through with the same eyes and got the same fate as the girl's mother. Rivera replied about how she knew nothing about the mother and she had no way of understanding why the bishop thought his fate and eyes were similar to hers. The bishop began to say that if the young lady knew what she should not, she would tell her fate. Rivera began to say that his majesty also believes that because of the similarity to her mother. The girl began to ask about whether she could bring tears of blessing. The emperor understood that it turns out she trusts only the words of Bishop Orb. The emperor thought about it and said that this time it could be said that the bishop was wrong. And afterward, the emperor asked how everyone was like this. If the girl can't bring tears, she will deal with the family as it was intended. But it will be all to avenge the girl and the bishop will have to take the punishment and afterwards told Rivera and the crown prince who wasn't near the girl that they can get engaged. The emperor began to ask the girl how and if it was fair. Rivera realized that she had nowhere to run and afterwards she began to talk about how she finally understood what the emperor meant. Need to find a path for the girl to follow in the future. Rivera bowed to the emperor and talked about how she understood everything and she would have to face evil all the time. Rivera began to ask the priestess for her name and afterwards spoke about how she would never forget that the priestess knew the girl's mother because Rivera had no knowledge of anything. But it was from the priestess that she first learned the truth about her mother. The priestess looked at the girl with a haughty face and spoke a look of pity. The emperor's aides were walking and couldn't believe that the crown prince would bring a girl from the archduke's family. Someone heard about the prince being crazy about a girl one of the assistants said that it was nonsense and the crown prince couldn't be crazy about someone. The girl was talking about how there was clearly some hidden agenda in this matter. The crown prince is absolutely turning his back on the temple and the girl couldn't understand how dare the archduke agree to all this. The rest of the people began to ask the girl to keep her behaviour down and not make any noise. The crown prince was outside talking about how he did not really want to hear his fiancée being criticised. After a while, the Crown Prince and Rivera were approached by these aides of the Emperor. One of the aides couldn't believe that the Prince had come to the temple, and yet Rivera was with him. The Crown Prince looked at the girl, hoping that she would play along with him a little, and the Prince told the girl that he should be angry, not her. The girl did not change anything in her facial expression. The Crown Prince looked at her with anger and asked her to make a simpler face, because no one could tell from her expression that the girl was madly in love. Rivera was talking to the Crown Prince about telling the Crown Prince himself that he loves the girl, even though it couldn't be said that way. The guy looked at Rivera and didn't understand why she was saying all this in public. The aides looked at this spectacle and could not understand what it was and whether the Crown Prince had really fallen in love. Rivera realized that they definitely believed it now. The Crown Prince sighed and said that it was too late to fix anything now. Rivera had changed after the meeting with the Emperor and the boy realised that she must have been told something because now she was even less in front of his eyes. The Crown Prince said to himself that people like the girl should be kept at a distance because people like her are not able to hide their emotions and behave properly. The boy realised that there was nothing to be done and now he should only trust the girl and nothing else. The Crown Prince held the girl by her shoulders and ordered her to stop thinking about her problems and relax. And then the Crown Prince offered Rivera to go inside. A pisa stood outside next to the pool. 
she held her clothes in her hands and looked into the water. After a while, Rivera swam out of it. The girl was talking about how she couldn't take it anymore and whether it was military school. Rivera talked about how she would not go to get married on such an occasion. The reason why Rivera had grown to nothing takes you back two days. The aide stood in the audience and began to say something. The girl talked about how two categories of people could attend the ceremony to honour the founding of the empire. They were the direct imperial descendants who possessed tears of blessing and the representatives of the church. The representatives of the church were also divided into two categories. Among them, different people are chosen every year. The selection criteria are quite unusual, but the most important one is the stone election. Rivera began to interrogate what a stone election was. People answered the girl about a river running near the church, part of which never freezes. They say the non-freezing river forms an unusual sediment. The stones that settle have power, intimate and spiritual. The stone is also an important element of the ceremony, as each year the priests bring it from the river. The one who brought the purest stone would represent the church. This meant that if the girl wanted to attend the ceremony as a representative of the church, in the proper condition for the ceremony, Rivera would have to show her strength by bringing a stone of purer quality than that of the other priests. The aide answered about the last time Cain had been chosen to be the representative of the church. So Rivera has to prove to the assistant about the girl being able to detach herself from the others. The girl has to prove that she is more honest and closer to the spirits than the others. Rivera felt as if this priest was instigating her. All the thoughts in the girl's head were confused, and in such a state she had to compete with someone. Rivera was in the water and talking about how she couldn't see anything. It was so dark in the water that all the rocks looked the same, and Rivera didn't realise which one she should choose. After a while, the girl came out and talked about how she would definitely not be doing this today. Rivera thought she would be able to figure it out when she saw a certain stone. Apisa began to ask the girl if there was any progress and what kind of progress. Rivera answered that she doesn't know how to choose and she just got a headache from all this. Rivera wanted to ask the other priests about all this, but they looked at the girl very warily and did not even make eye contact. Rivera thought, and after a while she asked what the Archduke had done. Apisa thought for a moment and after a while began to say that she probably knew who could help Rivera. The girl was all ears. Rivera told Apisa that if it's about the Crown Prince, it can't be right away, because the Imperial family can't get involved in all that. Apisa was telling Rivera that it's not the Crown Prince. It's someone who is very close to the Prince, the only string. It was the Crown Prince's servant. The girl stood outside the room and talked about how the Crown Prince was most likely staying again a do late. Everyone noted that the Crown Prince had never prepared so diligently for a ceremony before. The servant didn't understand what it was about, or if Rivera had interfered. It was the first time the girl saw the Prince working so hard, the servant didn't want the Prince to get sick or have anything happen to him. Suddenly, the servant noticed some person behind her back. It was a Apisa. The servant wanted to get away from the girl very quickly, but Apisa called her and asked her where she was running to. The servant turned around and asked Apis if she was really following her. The girl said that she didn't want anything and decided to run away. Apisa tried to stop the girl and talked about how she hadn't said anything yet and there was no point in running away. The servant was afraid and talked about how no one would want to talk to the girl if she was going to fight. Apis talked about how the girl did remember it and talked about how she beat the servant because the servant fainted before Apis hit her. The servant girl screamed and cried and talked about how Apisa had not an ounce of empathy. Apisa cornered the servant girl, so the girl had to stop. Apis walked closer to the girl and began to ask her if she was the sister of the priest Cain. The servant began to ask the girl how she knew this and if Apisa was really looking for information about the girl. Apisa began to say, that they were like two drops of water. Apisa began to tell the servant that if she was his sister, she should know that. So Apisa began to ask the girl for her assistance and asked that the servant help Rivera. The servant looked at the girl and realized that Apisa was very sold out to her superiors and that was even great. But still the girl replied that she would not help, even if Apisa asked. 
Apisa started to clench her fists and said that she was only asking for it out of politeness. And afterward, the maid added and said that if she did not want to do it the good way, it would be the bad way and Apisa would make her do it. After a while there was a fight. The crown prince, who was sitting in his room, heard it and spoke about how it was very noisy and he should keep it down. And afterward the prince finished and talked about how he was done for the day. The crown prince got up and started to think about the fact that he didn't know if he should even do all this or not. He didn't know if he could really trust Rivera or not. The crown prince went outside and saw Rivera in the gazebo. The girl was standing next to the bird and looking at it. The boy could not take his eyes off the girl. Meanwhile Rivera, as if sensed it, and started asking who was standing there. After a while something happened to the crown prince and his legs gave out. The boy began to fall. Rivera noticed this and looked at the crown prince. The guy wanted to say something back to the girl, but he couldn't. The crown prince fell right into the girl's arms. Rivera could barely hold the guy and asked him why he was so heavy. The girl didn't understand what was wrong and why he suddenly appeared and fell right in front of Rivera. The crown prince started telling the girl about how he didn't think about it either. The girl started telling the prince about how he didn't tell her to apologize and the rescuers want to hear words of thanks. The crown prince didn't realize what to say to him or if the word thank you was really a word. Rivera was telling the guy that she had fallen into the water for him and she wondered if the crown prince would say nothing to her. The girl stood waiting for those words. The boy wanted to say thank you, but at some point he didn't say it and asked the girl why he should thank her because the crown prince didn't ask him to save her. Rivera could not understand why the crown prince was so rude. Out of anger, the girl took to slapping the guy. The crown prince couldn't believe that the girl could slap him. Meanwhile, Rivera had already turned away from the guy and was asking about how Ruby was doing and if she had flown to the wrong place out of fright. The crown prince held his face and asked the girl what she was doing in such a place at such a time. Rivera wanted to say something but remained silent. A little earlier, Rivera sat at the table and thought about the fact that her mom might actually be alive. Rivera wanted to have accurate information and she decided that she would have to try and ask Chrysias for help. So Rivera wrote a letter and, and, and attached it to Ruby. Rivera didn't know how to explain to the Crown Prince about her trying to dig up evidence because she was being threatened by the Emperor. So the girl laughed and told the Crown Prince about how she was determining the depth of the lake. The girl didn't know what else she should do because Rivera's intuition wasn't working. The Crown Prince didn't have much faith in the girl and afterward told her about her being more far more fierce than he could have expected. Rivera talked about the Crown Prince hitting a sore spot. After a while, the girl sneezed. The guy started to ask if she had a cold. Rivera talked about how she wasn't. It was just that she had been in the water all day. And afterward, night came and it became even colder. The Crown Prince immediately took off his outer clothes without a second thought and put them on the girl. Rivera began to thank the lad. After a while, the Crown Prince took the sleeves and knotted them. Rivera did not understand what the Crown Prince did because she just sneezed and the girl could not understand why such caution. The Crown Prince was telling the girl that he was not good to look at, so he asked the girl to cover herself. Rivera stood there for a while in such clothes and then began to thank the Crown Prince for such an outfit. Rivera was very warm in it. The guy began to ask the girl how long she would stand outside because the wind was cold. The crown prince put his hand on the girl's cheek and told her to go before they got completely cold. Rivera laughed and touched her hand to the guy's hand and then asked if it was noticeable that she was so cold. The crown prince replied that it could not be said that way for sure and that it was just the prince's fears. Rivera agreed with him and said that he was right and that was correct. Recently, the girl began to think often about whether for her own sake she could get this man's tears and betray him. The girl's confidence in it began to disappear little by little, whether because the crown prince trusts Rivera or because the guy becomes not indifferent to the girl. The next day, Rivera was sitting in a chair. It was clear from the look of her that she was sick and the girl was not feeling well. Apisa stood next to her and looked at the girl. Rivera began to think about things and said that she had a cold after all. Apisa began to ask the girl if she was okay. Rivera answered that if she was conscious, it meant that everything was fine. 
and then the girl started to ask about the information the girl had to get. Apisa began to tell the girl that this information was related to the stone. Before she could say anything, there was a knock on the door, and in the area, a servant girl. She immediately said hello to Rivera and slowly began to approach her. Apisa spoke to the servant about what the girl had said about there being criteria for selecting the stone. What Rivera noticed was that the girl was more humble than usual this time. The servant began to tell Rivera that she should have known that stone was the closest thing to the power of a god. The power of a god moves the lands and transforms all living things into marvellous things. This power tends to respond to desires close to the movement of the world. Like when God gave the answer to the first emperor wanting to resurrect people. So when a priest is chosen, the first thing that comes to mind is a wish. A wish that can be fulfilled by the power of the spirit. It is said that at a certain moment, the stone that has received this power will be seen. The stronger the wish, the stronger the reaction. The servant girl began to tell the girl that if she could get the power of the spirit, what wish she would make. The crown prince was approached by his servant and urgently began to call out to him. The priest stood and talked about whether Father Keen was here. Meanwhile, the maid was telling the lad that she had just received news that Lady Rivera had made the final choice. The crown prince approached the girl and asked her if she was all right. Rivera replied to his highness that she was fine and now she could not swim but treat herself from today. The guy touched the girl's forehead and talked about how hot it was and afterwards asked Rivera if she could definitely continue all this in this condition. Rivera reassured the guy and talked about how she was fine, and if she couldn't participate in the ceremony now, it wouldn't be good. The priest stood to the side and looked at the girl. One of them began to talk about how he honestly doubted whether the crown prince cared about the future queen. Another began to talk about how in Chrysius Rivera had helped the guy a lot. Someone said that he had heard that they hadn't been dating long, so it was on everyone's lips and it hadn't been that long. Some of the priests talked about how it wouldn't have been so hard for the girl, even if she wasn't a member of the ducal family. Someone laughed and talked about how there is some commotion going on because of them, and there is a lot of commotion because of this wedding. Having to fight a person who knows nothing, and the reputation of the keen is nothing to speak of. Nobody knew what to do. One priest didn't like Rivera very much, and was talking about how he needed to show leadership and turn the situation around. Another priest was telling the guy that she was done with the chatter because Lord Rivera's condition is bad and everyone needs to hurry up. The first one was Father Cain. Everyone knew Cain and saw no point in doubting him after all the guy had been elected many times, including this one. Cain walked up to the priest and smashed his stone. The stone began to emit magical colours and show its power. The priest began to say that this was what was expected of Cain's father and by demonstrating it to the people, it would prove that the patronage over the powers of the gods in Lacrima was still strong. Rivera stood back and talked about how she was confident, and going through such a ceremony was much more difficult than the girl had thought. Rivera looked at the crown prince with a smile, though she herself was very much afraid and didn't know if she could handle it all. The girl started to ask the crown prince just in case, if the guy had a backup plan, if the girl suddenly failed. The crown prince didn't even look at the girl and asked her why she was thinking of such a thing, because the guy was sure of the girl's success from the very beginning. Rivera was yelling at the guy about how it was impossible. The girl was talking to the guy about how she said she said she would deal with everything to do with the gods, and as it turned out, the guy was lying. The crown prince came up behind the girl and talked about how he would fulfill his duty, and the girl would just have to be brave to do it. The guy was telling the girl that she could handle it and would do even better than she thought she could. And if you keep going like this, it will help. So the crown prince told the girl to keep her hands up because Rivera should succeed and then the crown prince wouldn't use his influence. Rivera looked at the guy and thought about the fact that from the way he was talking, the guy definitely has some kind of plan. The girl rose that she just had to do what she had to do and if she screwed up, then she screwed up and it didn't matter if Rivera became a representative or not. The girl realised that she had to prepare herself, and after Rivera took her stone and threw it away. It was impossible, just as the girl had expected. Father Cain looked at Rivera with a smirk and with some pleasure. The priestess began to tell the girl not to get upset, and for a mere human, the girl did very well. Unfortunately, the girl was not appeased by this. 
After a while, Rivera heard some kind of sound. At some point, the cave began to shake. The priestess started shouting to everyone that it was a bad omen and everyone should leave. Everyone was running away, but Rivera couldn't do that. Some kind of light appeared and was dragging the girl away. The crown prince shouted to Rivera, but nothing changed. And after that, the girl was already lying on the ground and could not move. The guy began to walk quickly to the girl. Suddenly Rivera woke up again in the space she was already in. The girl lay there wondering what to do. Rivera realized that she seemed to be in big trouble. After a while, a girl came up to Rivera. She was not happy and asked Rivera if she was okay. Meanwhile, the crown prince was trying to revive the girl. He was asking her if she could hear him, touching her and trying to make her come to her senses. The prince didn't understand why this had happened and why it was so sudden. Suddenly, some kind of light appeared. The crown prince began to look at it and wondered what it was. All the people could not understand what was happening or what it was. There were many white sparkling birds flying around Rivera. Meanwhile, in that space, a girl started asking Rivera why she made a wish. Rivera started asking her about what other people usually wish for. The girl said that most people asked for wealth and fame, for recognition in society. At times, something about regrets from the past. The girl started asking Rivera if she wanted the same thing. Rivera was angry and didn't realize who she was to know everything about him. The girl was telling Rivera that if she didn't want to tell, then let her not tell. Rivera sat in space and talked about how her original wish was different. She wanted to go back to the past when the girl's father was alive so that she could live a simple life and enjoy simple happiness. But the more Rivera thought about it, the more she doubted it, because she didn't know if she could be happy. Rivera asked the girl about the fact that if she was here, it meant that she couldn't find the right place for herself. The girl immediately began to remember the Crown Prince's words. He was telling the girl that he was being impertinent, so he asked the girl not to cry in front of him. The Crown Prince was saying that the Emperor wanted his tears. Yet the prince had no idea what the emperor's purpose was and how he would use those tears. The crown prince had a lot of phrases that the girl couldn't get past her ears and she memorized them all. Rivera talked about how she actually knew that even once she got out of here, she wouldn't be able to find her place. For someone like the girl, the crown prince was trying to create a place so that the girl would value their time instead of being on the sidelines. So Rivera conjured up the power to independently last in this situation, to make the people around her happy and the power by which the girl herself would become happy. The girl started talking about how the gods had chosen Rivera. The girl didn't understand what the gods were or who had chosen her. The girl talked about how the world would soon be in chaos. People have forgotten about the past. This is a sign that evil has begun to spread. Many are no longer thinking about the future and in search of quick gains, they see nothing further than their nose. Thus, they will be the cause of great pain, like the great war that had previously befallen the nation. So the gods chose a man who could put this chaos to sleep, an innocent man who knows his shortcomings, a man who can rival others. If one gains this power, it will be impossible to return to the carefree past. There might come a time when many will have to be punished, but the girl repeated this to Rivera and talked about how it doesn't have to be done and no one is asking for it. Also, if a girl wants to live a simple life, she can always opt out. Rivera began to ask about what would happen if she took that responsibility. The girl smiled and suddenly something started to appear. The girl answered Rivera that it would be hard at first, but in time, the more the girl gave to others, the wiser she would become so Rivera should never forget the words the girl had just said. The girl said that she had one more question to ask. Rivera tried to ask, but could not. A light appeared that blinded the girl's eyes, and after that, Rivera was already alive in her world. The girl was called by the servants, were with her, worried about her. Rivera answered that she could not hear anything. The girl opened her eyes fully, and saw the crown prince's servant standing around her and Apisa was next to her. Apisa rejoiced and told the girl that she had finally come to her senses, but the maid started talking about how it was not the time for that and she needed to report this to the crown prince right away. Apisa looked at the maid and talked about being very light-headed. Rivera began to ask the girl what was wrong. Apis began to tell the girl a very long story. 
After a while, Rivera asks about being surrounded by a light in the form of a firebird. Apisa began to say that it was so, and Rivera seemed to have dissolved into that light. The girl thought it was strange because she hadn't felt it in her vision. Rivera was curious to know if it was all related to the power that the woman was talking about, or maybe Rivera had acquired new superpowers. Rivera started trying something with her hands, squeezing them, trying to direct the flow. Apisa looked at all this and said that this girl was a very strange lady. And after that, the girl started talking about how she knew something unusual. She talked about how the priests were very impressed, and everyone seemed like they were having an urgent meeting with the prince. Rivera talked about how this was possible, for the girl immediately fainted. So they could not interrupt the ceremony because of the girl. Apisa began to say that it was not such a reaction. Rather, it was as if they had not expected it, and so they were very surprised. The maid ran to the crown prince's room and started calling for him. But from the boy's room came screams. The crown prince was yelling about why someone couldn't authorize the marriage. The crown prince stood and talked about how this was different from what the church had promised. The priest stood with his back to the crown prince and talked about how the priests had indeed promised his highness that they would allow marriage in exchange for empowering the church. But that was before the priests knew about Lady Rivera's power. The priest asked the guy if he knew what the power of the gods in the form of the light of the birds was talking about. The high priest answered about the first man who used the magic of the gods, the first man who was enlightened by the gods. This is the sign of the great magician of Enoch. The fact that his sign had appeared could mean that the great magician had arrived again. The crown prince was telling the priest that he understood this, but the lad didn't understand why the marriage couldn't be approved. The priest spoke of Rivera herself, not even realizing that she had become the windfall of such a significant event. So if the girl becomes a member of the imperial family, she will be involved in all matters one way or another. And the best outcome would be if Rivera becomes a member of the church. The priest was telling the guy that he had seen the girl's abilities with his own hands and wants to nurture them. A priestess stood outside and told the other priest to try shouting. After one, two, three, Rivera was already shouting that the church was warmly welcoming Miss Rivera. The girl looked out of the window and wondered what it was and what was going on. The crown prince came to the girl and looked out the window. The guy didn't like all this and called them shameless because recently they rejected the girl and now they decided to change their attitude. Rivera decided to ask about that, that now it is not better because they are not so hostile now. In addition, began to listen to the words of Rivera. The crown prince told the girl that she would not be missed. So far, the crown prince is slowing the church down from approaching Rivera, but there's no telling when they'll start pushing it. It couldn't go on like this. The guy felt very strongly about it. Rivera told the guy about not worrying so much. And also Rivera added that she found out about the existence of this force thanks to the crown prince. Others tried to bend the girl, but for her, the most important thing is to help the prince. Though the girl didn't know yet how the transferred power could benefit if she didn't know or imagine anything yet. The crown prince was replying to the girl about how he would help a little. Rivera was all ears and wanted to know how the crown prince would do it. Parque began to talk about how he could not share all the knowledge of souls that the head of the church had, but he can teach Rivera how to sense energy. Originally, spirits are a power that has been accumulating somewhere for a very long time and has created its own self for a purpose. The Crown Prince answered about how even in their room there are forces that can become spirits. The guy was telling the girl about having a wish that the stone reacted to. The Crown Prince told the girl to remember that wish, concentrate on it and on the movement beside her. Changing the airflow was already half the success. The girl's wish was to be a support for her loved ones. The girl was curious to see how she would help the crown prince. Rivera realized that this way she would be able to control her power, but Rivera didn't understand at all what that power was or how powerful it was. The girl didn't know anything. She didn't know what she was supposed to do, what movements and more. The crown prince stood next to the girl and ordered her to focus. Suddenly a bright light appeared in the room. All the priests who were outside were surprised at what they saw. Rivera was very much frightened. She thought the crown prince was about to kiss her. 
The Crown Prince told the girl that he thought she understood and the guy assumed that Rivera was thinking something strange. Rivera told the guy that he was wrong. The girl looked out the window and saw the Archduke heading towards them. All the priests did not understand who it was and why he was here. One of the priests told the Archduke that it was very brazen to show up in a church and apparently it was not enough for the man to use the sanctuary for his own purposes. The Archduke began to talk about the fact that, that he had not come to find out, the Archduke here had business to attend to regarding Rivera's marriage. The priest began to tell the man that unfortunately they were also denied a meeting with the girl. The priest said that he was only joking once and the prince immediately decided to hide the young lady and if Rivera doesn't want to join them, they won't force her. The Archduke did not understand what was being talked about and began to ask about what had happened to Rivera. Eretz began to ask about whether it would be better to hear it from Rivera herself. After a while, the Archduke turned around and started to walk away from the priest. But the priest decided not to keep silent and started to talk about how he was sorry when people who live in the past are incomparably disgusting, but no one can say anything about it. Rivera stood in her room looking out the window. Suddenly the door opened and the Archduke entered. The girl was glad to see her father and she had always hoped he would come to see her. Meanwhile, the Archduke was looking at the sparkling birds that were flying all over the room from Rivera's power. Her father began to ask the girl what it was. Then Rivera began to say that she had participated in a ceremony to honor the founding of the empire and had passed the selection. The girl had gained some kind of power, with the help of which there is a connection with the spirits. She can't control it yet, but if she learns how to do it, she can help other people. Thanks to this, the girl was recognized by the church. Rivera told her father that he shouldn't worry so much and the girl would be fine. The Archduke was shocked by this and told the girl that she was wrong. Rivera didn't understand what the Archduke wanted to tell her. Then her father took her by the wrist and began to ask her what she thought she could handle since she had found her newfound strength. The Archduke began to ask the girl if she knew why he had made the girl the prince's bride. The father told the girl that she was acting as if she had no faults and that Rivera was also always unable to keep still. The Archduke told the girl to think about why people don't recognize you as a future princess. Rivera called him father and wanted to say something, but the Archduke interrupted her and said that he was Duke Duarte to her. Rivera started talking about how she is not being recognized as a future princess because these people know this and therefore cannot recognize her. They know that Rivera is not the Archduke's dead daughter. Apisa stood next to the door to the room. She began to think about something and realized that she had to do something. Meanwhile, the Archduke stood in the room, not realizing what he had just heard. His eyes read surprise and he wanted to hear an explanation from the girl. Little Rivera was in the street and remembered something. Later, she was approached by the Archduke, who began to ask the girl what she was doing. Her father saw Rivera all in the ground and asked her about picking at the flower bed again. And afterwards, he began to ask her about the fact that hadn't he told Rivera to maintain the reputation of a princess. Rivera answered her father about what the gardener allowed her to do. And afterward, the girl said to look at what she had done. Rivera was showing a bouquet of flowers. The girl talked about how the flowers were blooming. And that is what the girl wanted to show so. To Rivera, it was beauty. The Archduke looked at the bouquet and hugged the girl. Rivera started to talk about how the Archduke's clothes might get dirty, but her father started to say that he didn't care and afterwards suggested putting the flowers in a vase. Rivera laughed and agreed to this. The child left in place of his sick wife, the Archduke's daughter, whom he loves madly. It was raining outside the window. The Archduke was talking about how it wouldn't be good if it rained all night. Rivera lay on the bed and talked about tomorrow being the anniversary of her mum's death. The Archduke agreed with the girl and talked about how he knew that his mum loved sunny days more than rainy days. The Archduke called the weather unfortunate because if it were a nice day, Rivera could take her mother's favorite flowers. Rivera began to ask if she could take them right away. Then her father began to say that it was too dangerous for all day were flowers that bloomed only in the river's unfrozen water. The river would probably overflow in this weather 
so Rivera wouldn't be able to find the flowers. And even so, the Archduke replied about the girl having flowers that she grew in the flower bed, so Mum would be proud of that too. The father said that flowers on the river their mother could always get, but flowers grown by Rivera were a different matter altogether. The girl agreed and said that they were flowers that the princess herself had grown. The Archduke agreed with this and spoke of how nothing could compare to his daughter's colours. The Crown Princess will be a great person in the future, able to do anything. Rivera asked about straight everything she would be able to do. Her father said that it is, because the girl will inherit the territory and become the head of the family, so Rivera will be able to get the title of Duke. Rivera began to question the Archduke about whether this was possible since she was a girl. Her father began to say that there is no difference and there are girl rulers in other countries. The power and authority not available now would become so, and the Archduke would only do it for the girl and no one else. The Archduke would tell the girl that she could handle anything. Her father had promised that. Rivera thought about the Archduke's words on any case. Little Rivera stood with her father again. She gave confidence for her mother and told them to decorate them luxuriously. The girl talked about how this is the person who gave Rivera life, so the girl wants to give her the best. After a while, the girl disappeared somewhere. The maid started talking about the fact that the girl had to go to the river. The servants kept saying it was dangerous on such a day, but she said she must bring any flowers to her mother. Afterward, the girl asked the servants if they could make way for her decision. After a while, the girl went to the river and stumbled away. The Archduke listened to all this. The servants apologised to her and talked about how it was their fault and everyone should be killed. No one knew whether he could have done such a thing. He may be an Archduke, but he's still a human being. Later, as a result, the princess's body was never found. It's a severe injury. The Archduke must have been very crushed. Some time later, at some point, a girl named Rivera passed by the Archduke. She was coming back from some store and she had groceries in her hands. Some people knew the girl and told her to hurry up. All the while, the Archduke was looking at this girl. Along with the man was his assistant, Easton. The Archduke called him over and told him to find out about that child. The moment the Archduke saw Rivera for the first time was like a second chance for him. He thought that this time he should do everything for the girl so that Rivera would not have a hard time, so that the girl would not feel pain and would not come close to death. Present tense, the Archduke was angry and asked the girl why she kept saying no. The Archduke told the girl about how it was getting harder for him to protect the girl when she kept telling him not to do it. Rivera replied to the Archduke about how she is always grateful that her father reaches out to her. The Archduke interrupted the girl and said that he was her father. The Archduke thought about something and then told the girl that if she wanted to leave him so much, she would have to use his own strength because the father does not even know what the girl can do. And afterward, the father left. Apisa immediately came into the room and started apologizing for the fact that she could have protected the girl, but didn't dare. Rivera said about how she was fine and she was used to it by now. After all, everyone in the duchy is like that. It was easier to accuse Rivera of behavior unworthy of the title of crown princess than to stop the Archduke. Rivera talked about how, if you looked at it that way, no one would have sided with her. The girl thanked Apis for these words and said that everything was fine. And in any case, the girl knew from the beginning that this was not her place. It was night. Rivera couldn't sleep, so she just lay in bed thinking about something. She realized that there wasn't much time left before the ceremony and Rivera didn't know if the chancellor had received the letter. The girl realized that she couldn't act lightly. At some point, the girl heard some sounds. Rivera decided to look out and see what it was, but afterward the girl saw Tatio, who went up to Rivera. The guy started asking the girl how she liked the temple. Tatio asked the girl if she still needed to get used to him or not. Rivera was very much surprised when she saw the guy. She immediately started asking what he was doing here and why he showed up. The guy answered that he didn't even know, and afterwards he asked the girl if she wanted to take a walk under the moonlight. Rivera said that would be nice. But even being in the church, she was already in trouble. And so if the girl had anything else going on, she would be in big trouble. 
Tatio told the girl about how everything would be okay if she didn't scream. Rivera began to ask why the yelling and where they were going. Tatio answered the girl that it was just a normal night walk. Afterward, the guy took the girl in his arms and jumped off the window. Rivera started screaming because she was really scared. Tatio laughed and said that because of the girl's screaming they might get caught and Rivera should be quieter. Rivera didn't understand how Tatio could ask a girl to do such a thing. After a while, the guy put the girl down. Rivera started complaining about how she almost died. Tatio started telling the girl that this is a closed roof. It is the only place from where you can see the church. Rivera was very much surprised by that, as it was very beautiful, and afterwards the girl started asking the guy what he wanted to talk about. Takio, with a smile on his face, started to ask the girl how she was doing with getting the crown prince's tears. Rivera looked at the guy and afterwards asked him about the fact that he came to just give the girl a checkup. The guy told the girl that it wasn't a test and asked if Rivera needed his help. The girl talked about Takio changing his mind on his own and it wasn't the girl. The guy looked at the girl and asked Rivera about whether she really wanted to marry the crown prince. Rivera didn't know if she really wanted to, she wasn't sure but the girl thought that and wanted to be by the crown prince's side. Rivera realized that she could do a lot if she stayed by the crown prince's side. Tatio looked at the girl and told her that it was a delusion. At the same time, in order to stay with the crown prince and accomplish a lot, the girl will have to sacrifice something. Tatio talked about how Rivera is not only needed by the church, and the girl knows that too, so Rivera was going to get the crown prince's tears. The girl talked about how at first she thought it was unreasonable and believed that she wouldn't be able to get what she wanted in this place. But while Rivera has been around the Crown Prince, she's met people who appreciate her. It's the first time she's found a place where she's welcome, for the sake of the people she hears such words from. Rivera asked Tatio about whether it was wrong to want to stay here. Tatio looked at the girl and told her that the reason why His Majesty still kept Rivera around the Crown Prince was because of one thing. It was that the girl was the only person capable of receiving the Crown Prince's tears, and if suddenly the girl couldn't do it, then His Majesty would crush Rivera by force. The girl stood and looked at the guy, and afterward decided to ask Tatio if he had heard the story about the girl's mother. Tatio told Rivera that this was her last chance. The girl has to get the prince's tears during the wedding ceremony and afterward come to Takio. After a while, the guy took out something and put it in the girl's hands. Takio immediately interrupted Rivera and talked about how in La Crima they exchange kisses on the eyes when they make an important promise. It means people swear with tears. The thing Takio gave Rivera contained a small amount of poison. It is non-lethal, but it can be irritating. Rivera couldn't believe that she had to put it on her lips and take the oath. Tatio had told the girl that she didn't have to worry about leaving the palace since there would be a commotion in the hall after the oath was over. The girl didn't want to hear anything else. She had no way of understanding why Tatio and the emperor would be willing to go to such lengths just to get the crown prince's tears. Tatio talked to Rivera about how there must have been some misunderstanding and the guy doesn't want the crown prince's tears. Tatio started talking about how he wants the girl to be spared misfortune. Rivera looked the guy in the eyes and asked who she was to him. Tatio told the girl not to fantasize and they just cooperate, and the girl uses the guy for her own benefit, and Tatio helps the girl for her own benefit. The boy began to talk about the commotion that would ensue after the vow was over. At that time, a way would be opened for the girl to escape from the palace. Afterward, Tatio began to ask the girl if he could come to get her. In a certain room, one of the priestesses was standing there. She couldn't understand why this had happened, because it wasn't supposed to be like this. The priestess didn't know how to get rid of the canoe, how the one who came from nowhere dared to take the place. The priestess thought this impossible, for she and Kanu Reba were to be the protagonists of the ceremony. Another girl came to the priest and said that perhaps he had gotten rid of his righteous brother, who could take his place and had done it in the dirtiest way. The girl showed something to the priest and with a smile on her face asked her if she had many regrets. As soon as the priestess looked at it, her eyes filled with wonder. She didn't realize who she was or where she got this thing from. 
The girl started asking the priestess what she was going to do and if she was just going to do nothing. And afterward, the girl talked about sharing the girl in a good way. Some girl came into the room and told Rivera that the time had come. Rivera heard this and spoke of coming out soon, all the while looking at the thing Tatio had given. The servant girl rejoiced that the day of the founding of the country had come and everything had become so lively. The servant was telling all the people to have fun and afterwards she saw a pisa who was not happy about anything and was just standing there. A pisa began to ask in what sense it was forbidden to carry knife weapons in the ceremony. The maid talked about how no one could go in there except the participants. A pisa did not understand how she could protect Miss Rivera. The servant was telling Apisa that there was nothing that could be done because everyone in the temple was pretty conservative, but that the place was very safe and the girl could take it easy. Apisa was telling the girl that she couldn't trust these weak priests. The servant was arguing with Apisa and talking about how it is ignorance. The servant asked Apisa what was wrong with her, for the girl thought she had never seen her so troubled. Apisa looked at Rivera and afterwards said that she had nothing to say and she had nothing to talk about either. The servant started asking Apisa if she knew why people were having such a big festival for the founding day of the country. Apisa waved her head and said she didn't know, and afterward she decided to ask why. The maid started talking about how this ceremony shows the stability of Lacrima. Now the empire is turbulent as the tears of blessing have ended. This is all to show the people the power of Lacrima and how safe they have thanks to the emperor. Gentleman Apis, Mistress Rivera's protector and a resident of Lacrima. The servant began to ask the girl about how about she too rest in peace today under the protection of the dragon. Apis was talking to the maid about how sweet her speech was and whether she had fallen in love with her. The maid asked Apis why she was saying such awful words since even a three-year-old child does not respond to kindness like that. The girl decided to divert her attention away from Apis and after saying that he had finally come, the maid spoke about how if Apisa wanted to help Mrs. Rivera, she should take a look at it first. Apis did not realise who had come. The servant began to say that the most dangerous enemy of Lady Rivera and His Highness had come to see them. His Majesty, the Emperor. The Emperor was talking about how good the festival was, and he was even able to enter the temple he was kicked out of. The Emperor asked the priestess how that child was doing, and if he was doing well. The priestess said not to worry, as all the preparations were complete and everything would go according to plan from now on. Rivera stood with the priest. He began to tell the girl not to worry too much because after all the ceremonies were over, Rivera would be able to leave. The priest was talking about what people expected of the girl, not the ceremony. Rivera nodded and tried to make a serious expression on her face. The girl understood what people wanted from her, definitely not just ceremony. This is the Crown Prince's bride, talking about the fact that the Crown Prince has a person dear to him, that he, who previously would not let anyone near him, has brought this person with him. If the Crown Prince shed tears in front of everyone, it would mean more to the people than having a ceremony and trusting His Highness the Prince. Afterward, someone started shouting that the ceremony was starting, so everyone should take their seats. The maid was telling to see Apis that the ceremony was starting. The Crown Prince stood nearby and watched it all. All the people were looking at the Crown Prince and admiring him. Takio was standing somewhere aside. His face didn't show joy, he wasn't happy about it. The Crown Prince began to approach the senior priests and then began to recite the oaths. After a while the priest's staff lit up with a blue colour and the whole temple responded. After this colour, Rivera approached the Crown Prince. She uncovered the boy, who was covered in a veil. All the people began to murmur and talk about the fact that this girl had caught the eye of the Crown Prince and talked about the fact that she was the daughter of Archduke Duarte. Someone said that they saw her for the first time and someone else replied that the girl looked more ordinary than she thought. After a while, the Crown Prince was already saying his oath. He said that by the power vested in him, he was appointing Rivera Ventus Duarte to be the Crown Prince's consort. And before all men, he made an oath that would not be broken by tears. And afterward, the boy kissed the girl in the eyes. After a while, the Crown Prince talked about how it would be the girl's turn now. 
Rivera realized that if she kissed his eyes now, the prince would cry and everyone would be happy and then Rivera would also no longer suffer and could escape. Everyone was surprised and waited to see what the girl would do. Rivera talked about that if she kissed the prince, she would get his tears and the girl could make everyone happy that way. But she would make everyone happy except one person, the wound. Rivera didn't want to think about anything else. So she reached the crown prince's face and kissed him on the lips. Sometime after the kiss, the crown prince wanted to say something to the girl. Rivera replied to the prince about how she can explain everything and the prince should listen to her. The crown prince stood and asked the girl what she had done and how she could do this to him. There was blood running down the crown prince's lips. Rivera screamed at the prince and asked why the hell this happened after all this didn't happen when she applied it to her lips. Not a minute later, red men with swords ran into the hall. Everyone started to panic and run away. The priest stood there and said that it couldn't have happened because the spirit's protection in this place was stronger than anywhere else. Therefore, the wretched heathens shouldn't have even set foot on this land. The priestess stood with a staff and shouted that the future princess had attacked Prince Rank and she had probably sent these thugs here. So they should immediately block the exits and capture Rivera Ventus before she escaped. The crown prince was on his knees, blood dripping from his mouth, and he couldn't look at anyone but the floor. The maid was shouting to all the people to go a special way. One little girl was sitting in the corner, calling for her mummy and daddy. There was a Gentile standing near her, who wanted to grab the little girl. As soon as Apisa saw this, she immediately ran to the heathen and kicked him. The man in the red cloak fell down and could not get up again. Apisa grabbed the girl by the hand and the servant and told them not to stand still and led them away. There were very many people in one place. Apisa started shouting to Rivera and calling her to go to a safe place. The girl did not hear Apisa and stood near the crown prince. She called his name and waited for him to say something back. Rivera didn't understand why there was so much blood. After all, this wasn't what she had planned and she was only trying to save the guy. 